Radio. I'll take the night, I'll take the night. 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 Cause you have a heart that's divine. Loving you all, girl, you mine. Eternity's ours, yeah, you mine. We'll live the life, I'll take the night. Welcome to Take the Night, and I'm your host, Boyd, with co-host D. Shine and Angelica Martinez, and you guys should know by now, unless you're new, that D. won't be with us tonight. He's only with us on Mondays, and yeah. How you doing, Angelica? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm real good. We, we, yeah, I'm good. I was worried about you today when I was trying to call you. I was like, oh, I hope she's okay. I no, mentioned it to Sarah. I was, just... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I hope she's all right. <laughs> like, uh, um, but yeah. I, I was good. I was good. Just, you know, needed some time to to meditate. So, you know, and rest up for for the show and everything. So, yeah. yeah that's cool. And so we have we have a, a a first tonight. Tonight's topic was actually requested by a new listener. The title, you know, wasn't exactly, but the the title for tonight's show sprung letting go of past relationships. And um again, um we have uh, another question from YouTube. And before we before we do get into that, I want to uh say that Oregon Ducks rule uh Helica said, "Thank you for answering my questions on your show. I really appreciate it. That was really cool." So, that's the response to how we answered it, their question on uh Monday show. I feel like that's pretty cool. Cool. Yeah, that is really so. cool. So, yay! Glad we helped. Yeah. In some way. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, let's see. Now, this topic is a little, it's a little different because when you start getting into matters of the heart, there's no one way to break out of attachment. But you know, they're there's philosophy when it comes to it, and one can only just speak on what they've come to terms with. So that's all I can say from how I'll be speaking about it tonight. <clears throat> Though I've had situations in my life where I can say I've been wrong myself. So it wasn't just like I was taking shots at people who are going through it. I'm really just I – mean, I can relate to it in a sense. Yeah, so mm-hmm. – yeah, it's wrong. Letting go of past relationships. Uh, with myself, I'm always going to, I feel like everything is everything. So with me, I tend to always go back to those spiritual concepts because it, for me, it's the root of everything and it really solves a lot of the things that I'm going through. So when I'm speaking about it, that's that's where it's going to, that's where it's going to be stemming from. What what are your thoughts on letting go of past relationships, Angelica, from a female's perspective? And I'm sure you know some, I know you know some males that have been going, that have gone through it too, so I'm sure you can speak on both perspectives, but, you know. Well, you know, for me, I've, I've, I've always looked at relationships as, like, not trying to do the same thing, like if something didn't work out, you know, what did I learn from it? You know, and that's like every relationship from me, whether it's, you know, a romantic relationship or a, uh, you know, friend relationship, um, even a family relationship. And, you know, along the lines <clears throat> of my own growth, you know, I've always you know, wanted to grow and learn. And 
it seems as though, like, in relationships, especially, you know, of a romantic type, it's always hard because, you know, you are planning things together, you know, as one, you know, kind of, like, unit. And then to have that kind of uh, end is hard to let go because it's like a lot of people put a lot of energy into that. And sometimes it's hard for for people to let that go Um or that dream, you know, that they had of doing certain things together or achieving certain goals together. Um, so from that point of view, it's like, you know, you, you do have a lot to shed and a lot to process because it's like, you know, you give up a lot, but then you also gain a lot because it's like you you learn about yourself because you're meant to grow and learn and evolve and relationships help us do that. So it, it's tough sometimes to let that go because we put a lot of, you know, energy into building certain dreams and putting certain work in. And that's why it's like people say relationships are work because they are. They're not easy. If it's easy, not everybody would do it. Simple as that. But... yeah. You know, I agree. It's, uh, no, go ahead. No, no, I was done. Go ahead. Uh, I guess uh, if if I look back at when I was would go through stuff like that, where you know I would like a female and it didn't work out, or maybe I never got to fulfill even getting the opportunity, but there was still a piece of me that was interested when I look back at that uh it was it was all an idea because it seems like we'll set these set up these dreams like you said and these ideas of what something could be and when when at least when I look back at doing that I mean it could, it could really set you up for for a weird situation. Um, but, but with time and growth, I've realized, okay, if, you know, this is an individual game and if you have, you know, other people involved, whether that be a significant other or friends, that's a plus. But it shouldn't be how we define our success as a human being, having somebody else with us. And I guess that's what I was relating to what I said when I said, you know, when I was going through that kind of stuff in a more immature space regarding what life was about and the journey from an individual perspective, it seems like, as humans, we can tend to say we need these different things that validate our experience while we're here on Earth. And if we don't get those things, it's less about, I mean, because it's like how, especially if you didn't really spend a lot of time with the person, it's like how, what is it really about? Is it, is it about how they made you feel or what you wanted to get out of it? Because I really look at relationships as a learning experience. So when you start looking at your experiences on this planet as growing and all the relationships that we build down here are to grow, find yourself, well, when I, the way I look at it now, if I were to find myself stuck in a past relationship, I would realize it, in a, emotionally Though it would be hard to get out of that, I would realize the, the longer I stayed in that, that, that emotional stagnation regarding someone that's clearly not interested in me anymore would, is doing me more of a disservice than a service as, you know, just growing as an individual. 
And it would be in my best interest to do everything I could to move forward. And it would be easier to move forward thinking about it that way because it's like, okay, um, I'm here to grow and continue to grow and to continue to expand and being stuck right here, I'm not expanding anymore. I've become stagnant and some, some interactions are meant for the time in which they last for. And we tend to want to halt another person's growth based off of what we want from them. Forgetting that, you know, that person has the right to expand and maybe their expansion doesn't, their vision of their individual expansion doesn't see me, doesn't have me in it. And it's a tough, tough thing to swallow, of course, but if you know that you're here to grow, you take that as a learning experience, an obstacle, and then the opportunity to move forward. And and, and if you add in within all that spiritual principles, and you you because it all ties back to spiritual principles on how to move forward in my eyes, because if you if you are what you what you think and what you eat, like we are, you know that. And you, and you manifest, and, and if we know that we manifest what we focus on, you know, focusing on that, that, that person that doesn't want anything but to move forward from, you know, say, me, the individual, doesn't do anything but continue to fix me in, you know, some kind of depressive state, uh, some, kind of, some kind of self-pity kind of state which really puts me outside of meeting that next person because every individual we meet is but a cursor to the next version of that very same energy. And what I mean by that is you, you know, you meet a person, uh, well, let's say, let's look into the realm and see how most people have these types. And, may, and though they may have different kind of look types, they, let's say they have, five different look types, okay? And they're date, and any time when they're dating, they keep going for these five different types. They're, 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 they're templates of a reoccurring energy that, that, that the person is attracted to. So if you're in a relationship with somebody and it doesn't work out, it's not the end-all, be-all because this is a C. And... That expression, you know, there's many fish in the sea is there for a reason. It's not something to just hype your ego up. It's literally telling you how the world works. And if you know there's many fish in the sea, then all you have to do is redirect your focus to, of course, thinking of expanding as an individual so it's not strictly from some uh, external kind of shallow egotistical perspective of dating because a lot of times when we get our hearts broken we do tend to put up barriers and these walls of wanting to be tough and like this will never happen again maybe I was too weak we kind of look down on ourselves maybe I wasn't cool enough but ultimately you should be just shooting for people who just you should look at the situation and say okay what what was I getting out of it truly and a lot of times if we do that, you realize things didn't work out for your best interest and for their best interest. It's never just one, uh, it's never just a one-sided thing. I'm sure there's aspects of you that didn't work for them and aspects of them that didn't work for you. But again, this is an individual journey. So though we're supposed to be considered and empathic, you always have to have your self-interest in mind and how you feel, though, because you're trying to live life and continue to want to live life, and you can't do that depressed, thinking about everything that you weren't in the eyes of some person in the past. But you can really have a sense of uh, serenity. I'm going to use <laughs> shout-out to Serenity CMD while I said that. <laughs> you could have a sense of serenity 
knowing that, okay, this didn't work out, but there's another version, and I don't mean like the exact personality, but there's going to be another version of that energy that you tend to be attracted to, whether it be five, ten different kind of energy templates, avatars that are in the waiting in the wing for, for you to put yourself out there and, and just run into because nothing is by coincidence. So, you know, it didn't work out, but yet there's another version that's got minor tweaks, major tweaks, depending on where you are, because you attract, we attract what we're ready for. And this goes back to how they say when, um, when a student is ready, a master will appear or a teacher will appear. The same goes mm-hmm. for, for when, we're in our rela- when, we're, when we're out here putting ourselves out there for relationships and friendships. But it's based off of where we are, what we're going to manifest. So it all goes back to uh, how what's really going on inside of us. And if we're putting up front and we're letting these past relationships create traumas and then we put up walls and barriers and fronts when we continue to when we move on we're going to manifest people that are doing the same exact thing and then we continue to get ourselves in this perpetual cycle of what we can call failed relationships but are really just practice and it's not i'm not talking about in a sexual sense i'm talking about in a practice from an individual perspective of figuring out how we in relationships and how we manifest relationships. So, you know, I'm going I'm to stop there right now and kind of throw the ball to you. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, relationships are always meant for us to grow. You know, and and that's what it's like the ones that you have on a very intimate level, you know, are really reflections of yourself and, you know, and the other person as well. So, you know, it is true. Everybody is their own individual creating their own reality, but then you're also interacting with them as well. So it's, it's a growth. It's a process. And to look at your past relationships and to see what you learned, you know, how to communicate, how to interact, how to express yourself, and, you know, how you evolved as a person. And, you know, that is very reflective of going forward and what you seek in your new relationships. And just like you said, you know, when, you know, when you're ready, you'll reflect that, you know, out into the universe and all of a sudden, certain people and certain things and start to appear to you and you start to build these new relationships, you know, these new experiences, you know, that are different, that are better, that help you and you help them. And, you know, that's what it's really meant to do. What's up? And and I just want to throw in, which, which when you look at it from the perspective that you just said it, like new new things, then you, then from that perspective, you can realize that it's in your best interest to let go. Because though you thought you, we might have thought it was going to be what it was going to be or what it felt like sometimes, in the present moment, dwelling on that isn't doing anything but causing pain. So, so we're doing ourselves an a, a injustice by staying and harboring, you know, thoughts and and focus on that individual that has moved on. It's in our best interest to move forward. And that's all I wanted to say because I felt like that was, that was like fitting with something you said right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, and, and also you really have to understand that, you know, we've said this before, you know, where you put your thought and your focus, that energy goes. And it's like, are you going to be, putting it into something that you know isn't in your best interest for growth or you're going to, you know, allow this new energy to come in and this new, you know, thing that you've learned about yourself and what you will and won't accept and give yourself, you know, as you give, you know, to the world. So 
it's really about, you know, understanding your individual journey and how you grow in these relationships. And yet it's hard to, uh, like I was saying before, to let go of these ideas that you once had and these, these things that you set out to do, you know, together or with somebody, um, and then to have that go away, yeah, it's a shedding. Um, and it's a process. It's never really easy, you know. And, and that's one thing a lot of people say, it's not easy because it isn't, you know. Um, because you, we as people put a lot of ourselves out there, or we try to. You know, that's really the intent, you know, is to be able to express yourself freely, you know, and, and to grow and evolve, you know, your own way. Um, and in relationships, that's what it, it's, it's, it's meant, to, that's what it's really meant to do, you know, to really allow you to grow as a person, you know, and evolve and help yourself and heal the other person as well as you heal yourself. Um, so that's why it's like, it's, it's hard to, to, to let that energy go, especially when you put a lot of time and effort into it. And so I can understand why, um, you know, it's hard for people because you, it's like, okay, for me, let me give an example. Like, I really have to think about, um, you know, pe- when people transition, I guess, or transition over, you know, letting go of that relationship, that physical relationship that, you know, being able you're talking to about, see somebody you're, every day. You're talking about dividing from the body, like someone's yeah. passing on? Okay. Yeah, somebody's All right, passing just to clarify on. that. So it's like, you know, so you kind of have to let go of that, you know, whatever that bond was whether it be like, you know, um, somebody that you were with, somebody, you know, a family member, but it's like you still have to let go of that relationship and those memories and that physicalness of it and not being able to do certain things. And, you know, to cherish, you know, the the times that you did have and what you learned from it and what you gain and what you grow. Um, and... It's kind of like, you know, letting, I guess, that timeline, you know, with other people go as well as you evolve because you do have to evolve and sometimes that means letting go of certain friendships, certain types of relationships and certain people and that is hard because you let, you know, those those bonds and those things that you used to do um, go away. I mean... For myself, I never thought that I would be here talking to you about this, you know, or not working, you know, or actually have my own business and creating what I create. I would have, if you had told me like five years ago I'd be doing this, I'd be like, yeah, whatever, you're crazy, you're crazy. But, you know, to see that and see myself, it's like, wow. I've changed, and I'm actually so much happier, and I enjoy what I do and the people that I've met along the way. It's amazing, the experiences that I've had, you know, and being able to um, to grow and to, to see the effect that I have on people um, that, I clo- that are close to me and build, you know, real bonds or not real bonds, but just like deeper, deeper relationships on a more intimate mental level um, that I know are always going to be there. And it's, it's a great experience. So it's like every day is new. And being a part of that with people um, growing in those types of relationships is... Hold on a second. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I feel like I have to sneeze. You know what? In a nutshell, it's in a nutshell, because I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, I'm typing in my phone. In a nutshell, self-interest is the key to moving moving on from past relationships. 
I, that's the best. If, if there was like a something to write on a whiteboard that someone could walk by every day or look at every time they think of that person that they're trying to move on from, is it in your best interest to, while someone else is moving on, to, to yourself not be? And, that, and that's why I say self-interest, because, again, you have to, it all roots back to spiritual principles. We, we have to think of, think of ourselves as individuals trying to manifest. We see for ourselves and all that that entails from individual perspectives. And I doubt that some people may love drama. And, yeah, we're going to have moments where we feel some kind of way, but, again, um, is it in your best interest to be there, stuck in that place? Because it's going to create a snowball effect a lot of the times. You'll get grumpy. You may get agitated thinking about this person. You jump in your car, you're driving thinking about this person, you're not paying attention where you're going, you're, oh, you get yourself in an accident, you get yourself pulled over. You, you know, you might uh, ruin relationships you have with other people that are there for you just from being grumpy thinking about this person. And, and, and that's, again, something outside of you have that much power over you. Again, that's power over you. And the way I see relationships, you know, they're supposed to be partnerships, partnerships of growth, exchange. Uh, and they should be like icing on the cake, not you know, just everything that I want. It's like, you know, I want to be able to be self-sufficient, sustain myself, and then I want to add others to the equation that add joy, information, perspective, affection to the equation. Not say, I can't live without these things outside of me. That's why I say again, it's always going to go back to spiritual principles and concepts. And 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 I don't know, you know, one might not have thought about it that way, but sitting around to get over someone from the ego perspective, like, you know, you were all for them, but when it didn't work out, you know, some may take it this way, you, you know, when it didn't work out, now you're just thinking about them from a negative perspective and holding that frequency in your being and all you're doing is sending out bad vibes, bad vibes to them and bad vibes to yourself. You're going to manifest what you focus on. So, and that's going to be your, that a direct result of you manifesting what you focus on comes in the, in the form of feelings. See, people tend to not, really understand you're you're manifesting at all times rooted from thought and what you're doing is you're manifesting feelings and emotions as soon as you think you're feeling something so we want to be efficient manifestors that manifest things that keep us willing to to progress and move forward and get put ourselves out there and be successful in life and to be the best versions of ourselves. Nobody is worth that not happening for you. Not a soul. Nobody. Nothing outside of you is worth sacrificing the progression of your life and your visions and your goals. And that's why I say self-interest is the key to moving on from past relationships. It's not in your best interest to be sitting around Focusing on it, and it, especially from a negative perspective. See, me, I tend to look at relationships since I listen and, and observe and analyze those around me. I'm, when the relationship's moving, moving on or there's, there's you know, the time where this, there's a separation, if I'm going to look back at it, I'm going to look at what I learned from the, the people that are no longer around. And there, that's that again. That's where it goes back into. So, how how deep is your intention? Is it simply a physicality thing, um, filling a void of of affection 
and companionship, or are you deeper in your your search as for your while you're searching for these interactions in a sense to you know are you trying to learn something you know i I was telling uh me and Sarah were talking about this before this topic came up. I don't know who I was talking about in specific, but it was an individual I know that you know has amassed a certain amount of let's say success in the physical realm. And though that's not to me the important thing, you know, I want to be internally successful with my emotions and my feelings and my mind and externally successful. Some people that they may not need the internal stuff, but I do. But this person, I don't know them personally. So I know for a fact they had that external uh, thing down. They manifested a lot of external material wealth and success for themselves. And I was just saying, you know, the people in this person's company or that were in this person's company, even while they were on the come up, should have not left that situation disgruntled if they had the right, the right approach to, you know, how full a relationship can be, how rounded it can be. Yeah, it's emotional. It can be physical, but it can, it can be intellectual and educational. So, you know, I'm only saying that because, you know, a lot of times some can leave the presence of somebody that is, is amassed a lot of material success and wealth for themselves. Like, I'm disgruntled. I don't know what to do with my life now. And it's like, yo. If I was around that person all those years, I would have knew exactly what to do if, you know, our friendship or whatever the relationship was took to turn in different directions because I would have been paying attention to what they were saying to me. And that's that's what I'm saying. There's value in your in our relationships that go beyond us needing some kind of companion. And if we only look at it from the perspective of companionship and someone filling some emotional void for us, it's way easier to, for a relationship to end and for one to be sitting there with feelings that leave them or close to leading them to a place of depression and anger. It's just like change your focus. You're focusing on the wrong thing. What did this person present to you that you learned from? It could be, it could have been their perspective on life, their heart. And, and these are all since, since, since the, 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 I'm going to say the, 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 since the, um, when we are sprung or individual is sprung in a sense or stuck and it's putting them in a, in a, a space of where they're going into a depression, they're mentalizing what what happened and what it could have been and how it felt. You're in the mind. You're in the mind, but you're in the mind in a place where it's not doing you any service. And it feels like it's heart first, but if you follow your if you follow yourself, it'll your 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 feelings will be followed by the thoughts. You may picture that hug, how it felt, how they smelt, and then go into depression. So it's mind, then feeling. Again, you're manifesting feelings through what you're thinking. Mind over matter, right? The universe is mental, as I'll say on every damn show, I'm sure, because you can. these things are very fundamental. You can't – every aspect of our lives tie back to these things. So since you're in the mind, change the focus of the mind is what I'm saying and go to what you learned and how you're going to take that and move forward and create a better future for yourself. Add in to that the fact that you know that you manifest what you are. And if you know you're moving on and you're going to move on for the better, 
at worst, you manifest a person that's trying to move on for the better, which means it'll be a good thing. You'll meet a person that's an improved version of what you like that'll be looking for a whole nother kind of interaction themselves. Therefore, because a lot of times we get stuck, you know, I, I wrote a song once called that had a line in it that was like, 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 I, like, well, the, the gist of it was, I, I realized in my life that I was manifesting the same girl with different eyes, the same personality. It has nothing to do with anything outside of me. That was what I was going for. I didn't have a, a uh, rounded, deep, layered approach to what I was looking for. Therefore, you're going to get these surface things. And you're because we're looking from a surface perspective. That's the one thing that we really need to get over because then it'd be a lot easier to take to to take to 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 move on from a relationship feeling like we, we got something out of it. If we're not solely looking at, you know, faces and bodies and getting sucked into that and then a lot of times you're not hooked on the person's personality, you hooked on what they represented to your ego externally, how you felt walking with them, how you felt felt holding them, how you felt felt being intimate with them. But it's like, you know, and then you stuck feeling, feeling some kind of way, knowing that they're going to be doing all those things with somebody else. But if you, if you manifest in deeper spirits, you're having these great conversations that you can take something from and use in your life moving forward absent of them you don't feel so helpless when it's over because you're like i learned something here if anything this person was put in my life so i can learn what i didn't know before i met them and that's how i tend to look at all relationships like what am i learning from this person that way i focus on the best part of things instead of finding myself being depressed because we are what we focus on we experience what we focus on our feelings are a result of what we're focusing on. It's about changing your focus. Yeah, I agree, and that's 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 very true because it's like a lot of times people tend to always look at the you know what they're losing out on instead of you know like you said what they're learning you know and it really is important to where you put your focus on in the relationship, you know, what energy do you want to put forth and what energy do you want to receive? You know, if you feel like you you wasted your time, you know, and instead of like, wow, you know, this is what I learned, this is what I'm going to take from this relationship, you know, even though we're, we both have to go our separate ways, you know, it's best for both of us because I learned this about myself and about this person, you know. Um, So I agree with you 100%, you know, where you put your focus and energy in a positive way on the relationship, you know, and a learning experience, you know, a positive learning experience versus the, the whole negative and, you know, the losing out, you know, because it does, lead to that, you know, depression and feeling, you know, questioning, you know, why, why this didn't work out, is it you, are you a bad person, it's like, no, 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 it's never, you know, um, a real negative thing, it's like, you have to see what you, like you said, like, what you learned, and not, you know, blame or anything like that, you know, you have to try to see the the growth in yourself, you know. You know, um, another and, thing, an- mm-hmm. uh, another thing too. If you leave uh, a situation with, you know, a lot of disgruntled kind of feelings and emotions, and you put yourself out there, you're going to run. You're going to manifest somebody that's feeling the same way. And what happens is now you have, you know, a relationship built with a lot of baggage. So, you know, then you're trying to figure out each other, trying to get along, and this person has just as much baggage as you. And, yeah, baggage, you're never going to get around that. 
especially in the realm, in realms where people aren't conscious of getting rid of that baggage, that weight, keeping their heart light, not becoming calcified by past experiences and, and hardened and anger and all that kind of stuff. But you'll find yourself in, in a relationship where you manifest a, a mirror image of yourself because that's what we do. And mm-hmm. now you have communication issues because you both, are not over things because you both took the wrong things away from past experiences with your own focus. It was a result of focusing on the wrong things. And that's why they say, you know, uh, it's, it's a matter of what you focus on. Two people can look at, have, have, a, have an experience, the same experience, and take complete, two completely different things away from it. One will have an optimistic, could have an optimistic, and then the other could have a pessimistic version of of what they got mm-hmm. out of that experience. And it's 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 very true because I mean that's always like the the people's perspective, and it's based on their own experiences, you know, what they have reference to, and um, what they go to, you know, what their triggers are. So, you know, it's just always interesting to me how, you know, a lot of times people do always fall back to or go to the whole blame game and, you know, their thoughts go to that instead of, you know, how they grew. And, You know, for me, I've always thought of it that way. You know, I never wanted to make the same mistakes over again. You know, I always wanted to grow. I wanted to learn. And um, even looking back on my own past relationships and things that I've grown from and people that I've met and people that I don't even talk to now, but to understand the experiences and what I grew from it um, or what I've learned. And to see the change in myself, it's like, wow, you know, I'm not the same person, you know, I I was, you know, but I know more about myself, you know, because it is that evolution. And um, just like you said, that mirror, that expression, you know, you put out um, into the world, you vibrate that and what you receive back, you'll, it's a reflection of yourself, really. So... And to me, it's just always interesting. You know, I, I always like to listen to people's stories and see um, their perspective, you know, and try to understand, you know, why they say certain things or why they go to a certain place and ask those questions, you know, that some people are afraid to ask themselves. Because that's really the, you know, thing. People are scared a lot of the times to ask or to look into the mirror of themselves and, you know, really dig deep and figure out, you know, why they go to, I guess, that negative side a lot of the time. Um, because it has to, because you're so mad that you want to just lash out on somebody and therefore it can either you start to now, you both have flaws, you both could have did things better. What's the point of bringing up what the other person did that wasn't to your liking when you were doing things that isn't to their liking. You see what I'm saying? Like, why not just say, I, you know, I learned something from it. You, you know, what did I learn from this thing here? Let's move on. And it's not about being cold either because you're more in your heart when you can let somebody transition away from you than you are when you're trying to keep them and you're saying it's because I love you. That's not love. That's that crazy thin line between love and hate type shit. And I might just watch that movie tonight. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like... And, it's, <laughs> and, and that's really the thing. It's like, you know you know how they... um, A lot of people are... You know, a lot of people say you have to learn how to detach. You can't be attached to anything. You know, and, and that's really the truth. It's like you have to let that individual be themselves and you be yourself. You know, because like you said, it's not love if you're trying to control this person and, like, no, you know, you have to do this and you have to do that or, you know, uh, this is how you express love. It's like, no, it's about 
accepting that person um, for who they are because they accept you for who you are and understand that everybody is growing, you know, and, you know, wants to evolve, you know, because that's what you want for yourself. Um, well, that's what I want for myself anyway. Um, so, you know, to to understand that, it's like, you know, you you want the best for yourself, you know. But I guess, like, you know how they say, uh, treat others how you want to be treated. Exactly. You know, exactly. that whole thing. I don't want to be controlled and felt, felt put in a cage, so the last thing I'm going to do is put that on somebody else. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. And for real. <laughs> I'm, I'm for real. Because <laughs> that's, that's the worst kind of prison when it's like like that. Uh, yeah. And, and, again, that's empathy, too. You, you know, just saying, like, yo, like, they want to move. Uh, think, of it, think of it from, again, self-interest. How would you feel? If you and wanted to tra- move forward, you realize that something isn't right for you, and then this person was trying to stop you. We've all felt that, and some to not be able to act on what you feel in life is like the worst kind of prison. It's the worst prison. It's 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 real bad. It's like I'm free, but I'm also not. So it feels real bad. I'd rather really just be locked in a closet somewhere than to be walking around free, but yet I can act on the things that I would like to act on. So why do that to somebody else? You know, and and back to that perspective of taking something of value away from it. I remember, you know, the times when I was hung up on, hung up on chicks and I'm going to say chicks just for that person that (laughs) didn't want me to say chicks so I can annoy you. Chicks, 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 (laughs) chicks, 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 chicks. You know, she tried to tell me not to say chicks. That's that's what I'm talking about. Uh, like, you know, somebody telling you how to talk. It's weird. It's like, come on, man. I'm not, I don't mean nothing by it. I'm just using, I'm talking me. It's me. You know what I mean? Anyways, mm-hmm. but I remember when I was hung up on women, it, you know, more so growing up, like middle school and high school type things. And even like in college, when you think about it, it's like, when you th- when you retrospectively look at it, and that's the best way to really get over things is to go back to it. But you got to be careful not to be going back to it, focusing on the negative aspects of it. Because if you do, you're going to time travel back into bad emotions. So you really have to have before you go backwards like that. You have to have some control of the mind and of the the, the destination of where you're trying to go back to in thought. Because you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you're just reliving and refilling things of the past that, of a, are, of, that are of a negative perspective. So if you can get that out of the way and not be doing that, and you can go back to just what was going on and what you guys did most of the time, what I realized a lot of the times when I, when I was in those situations is I wasn't learning anything from, from, these, from these women. You know, it was, it was like, why am I – feeling like I'm missing out on something when if I think about our phone conversations, we're just sitting up on the phone, maybe watching a a show together or a movie together. Um, You know, she may fall asleep one night on the phone. I may fall asleep one night on the phone. We breathing and shit, listening. You know, it's like, what (laughs) is it that, that, that I'm so hung up on the way she looks? You know, because it can't be the conversation, especially if it's like, yeah, you talking about some shit you saw on on the news or something that happened at school, somebody else's business. That's not that's not deep at all. That's very that's just not deep. So it's like I'm not I'm not missing nothing there. And then you can say, okay, yeah, but they love me. But it's like, who really knows? Like love. That's that's like a, a weird thing. Like the way I see love, this is just me. I see it as just the the, the desire to want to 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 just help someone expand and and grow and and never halt that and be be there to help them expand and grow. When a lot of people love to them is like 
I love you so much. I want you around me all the time. Even if I'm just watching TV and you don't even like what I'm watching, you have to be right next to me watching this shit because I love you. And it's like, <laughs> really? You sure you're not looking for a dog or a cat? You know, because cause it's like you could interchange the two, and it's the same shit. A dog will sit there next to you while you watch a TV, in the bed, yeah. or even just on the floor. And the dog might even look like they're watching the TV with you. So it's like we really have to really just peel away our own shells and do this when you, you know, alone if you have to, because a lot of times people don't like to re- to admit in front of other people that they have some some superficial, shallow aspects to themselves, it's tough, right? Everyone likes to project an element of of perfection or some shit, but it's like, I'm going to tell you straightforward. There is nothing more beautiful to me than a beautiful woman or beautiful women. You can know that right now. But what I'll also tell you is I do not like people generally who don't have more than that. So it's not, the, the beauty really doesn't matter at this point in my life, though I like to see it. Tell me something. Like, tell me about yourself. I want to see how deep this person is looking into their own life. Like, what they've come to terms with. Because then you realize the morals in terms of, like, if you can trust them, if when things get tough for you, if they're going to just turn their back on you. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm trying to, like, it's like, yeah, she's pretty, but... I wonder what she thinks about because I'm more intrigued by conversation. I've I've had physical relationships. You know, you forget what it was like. At least I do after a couple of years. It's like, damn, I remember dealing with such and I'm just being real with you. It's like, I realized that the physical aspects of it all really do not matter. I do not remember them at all. So, so I value the things that you do remember in people, though. Like just going to the grocery store, having somebody help, like say you dropped something and someone just picked it up for you. Here you go. You remember that person. You remember. You remember these things about people's character, people's personality, the things that like people say to you. Those, that, those are the things that make people rememberable and valuable to me. Not how they look, because you can look as beautiful as the most beautiful person there is and be boring as shit. So I'm, I was only going to that because it's like when I was hung up on spirits growing up, it was basically, basically because I, was, I, I didn't have any depth in me. Because if I did, and if they, then that means I would have, I would have, this person would have had depth, right? And we would have had discussions and conversations. And if I was there mentally, if it didn't work out, I'd be leaving that shit. Yeah, of course I'm going to miss the conversation. But but then again, if if you guys had a connection and a conversational perspective, then you wouldn't lose the, the relationship. You know, there's many people in the realm, though it's uncommon for certain people, that still be still can have, like, strictly conversational relationships after once being intimate. That's because their relationship wasn't based around intimacy. You could say, you can say, yo, like, you know, I don't want to take it there with this person, but they cool, a cool friend. It's, it happens. I know there's people listening like, nah, I couldn't do that because, you know, but it, it is out there. <laughs> Remember, this is a multidimensional reality, so everything exists all in one space. So you're just focused on what you feel and how you deal with relationships. After it's over, it's like you guys are enemies or you can't see each other again and don't ever want to speak again. And it's like, that's not really healthy anyway, because you can see how more successful people in the realm have relationships and they may be business partners still and still have to be able to conduct business with one another. So you, 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 it's just, you just really have to be rounded in how you see these things. But ultimately Think about what the what the what what it was all about. What you all what you learned from it. Because if you if you can really if you really say if you learn something if you say yeah I learned something then it then okay you got something that you can take a value away from it and move on. So if you're gonna say 
I learned something because, you know, every time you mention something to a person, they always answer you with saying they got exactly what you brought up, even though they weren't even on that frequency prior to you bringing it up. So you'll be like, well, if the, if the relationship really meant something, then what? Then you would have took something of value from it other than the physical aspects of it and what you wanted from it from your perspective. And then they'll be like, I did. And it's like, okay, so why weren't you focusing on, on that prior? Because if there is something deeper than you just wanting to be with them, you should be able to have the empathy to say, okay, this person wants to move on because they should be a friend to you. You should care about them. If you love somebody, you want to see them grow. You don't want to suppress them. So you, you, it, it's like we're, we're contradicting ourselves. I love this person so much. I want, I want to be with them, and they should only be with me. That makes no sense whatsoever. If you think about it, if you say you love them, because you don't want them to grow. You don't want them to move on and have, but see, that's where if you can reveal that there was nothing really deep going on or there's just a real big attachment thing going on. But even, even from the perspective of just going back to spiritual principles, you have, you know, y yogis and monks that deal with the art of detachment mm -hmm. simply because, you know, a lot, it's about transitioning and like we talk, I've talked about before and the things that these soul agreements is what you'll hear sometimes and people don't really understand what that means, I feel like sometimes. These agreements and these bonds that we put ourselves into that continue to keep us in this cycle of reincarnating and meeting these people again so we can heal those things that we didn't heal in the past life. And that is that, that bond, that soul bond, is formed simply from the attachment. You, you know, you're, there's somebody on their, you know, on their dying bed somewhere that has all these attachments that are going to tether them to coming back because they feel like they're missing out when they leave. So that's why in higher spiritual realms where they got, you know, they're initiated in adept to higher spiritual concepts and they practice them, they, they really focus on the art of detachment from the perspective of knowing that these attachments are the very things that bond us to incarnating on this planet. One of the things that what we have to learn as a spirit, which probably more times than none is going to tie right back to our attachment. You see, so, so it's detaching is it doesn't mean being cold. It means you, you can love somebody, but also feel like you, you're not, uh, the world, the world will end without them. That's, that's, that's a, that's a strong attachment there. So if you really feel that way, that means you're going to, you're, you're creating a soul bond. So you're going to follow and trail this soul every time they incarnate. And then you might just, you might be having multiple times you're feeling this way about people and really just stuck. And now you, you now you, now you've created webs of soul bonds and ties that you just getting sucked into all the time, forgetting that this is an individual journey. You're trying to transcend and evolve within your own individual energy and spirit it's, it's about you it's about you it is about you and it's not a contradiction to say it's about me and everybody else that's not a contradiction i know it is to somebody like they can't understand how you can focus on self-interest but also not be selfish there's a difference there is a difference a selfish person is like you know, want everything. They're not trying to help nobody else. They just want everything for themselves. They're trying to walk over everybody. Someone who has self-interest from a spiritual perspective, they're understanding what they focus on, what they think, they manifest. They want to manifest great things. So they can't also be selfish because they won't receive anything because to receive you have to give, right? Give and you have to give, right? So you have to get you get what you put out. So there's a difference between being selfish and having a self-interest from a spiritual perspective because when you have a spiritual perspective on manifesting and keeping good vibes, 
you're trying to give good vibes to everybody else because you only want good vibes yourself. And you know that you're creating this energy vortex and this momentum of good vibes. So if you work with other people like the way I am at this point in my life, just by conducting Take the Night, right? It's oh. not all about what I want on Take the Night. It's not. It's about what Angelica wants and what Dee wants. Is it not, Angelica? Yeah, it is. It, it, we talk <laughs> about, you know, subjects beforehand, and, you know, we give we we all agree on it. It's not just one-sided, which is awesome. And that's really how it should be, you know, and that's how you should be with yourself, you know, the whole communication and expression. So, you know, it's, it's an awesome thing to have that, to to have that freedom. And, you know, I'm just, like I said, I'm, I'm thankful to have, you know, relationships like that. And it is very true, you know, um, what you said about the whole detachment. It's like, you know, I could, you know, still love somebody or you could still love somebody um, and not, like, have to be so attached to them, you know, and not be like, oh, my gosh, the world is going to end. It's like, yeah, you would, you would feel some type of way, you know, about it, but you wouldn't let it stop you from doing, you know, certain things. So, um, you know. You know, another way I look at it. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, 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 you you kind of sparked in me of just a, another like phrase or I don't know what to call it to say. It's like an uh, angle, a perspective. I don't have kids, but if somebody listening is right or plan to, when you when you have kids, you're gonna love your kids. But when this when they want when this when they're at a space to where okay, you want them to start to expand and have success and confidence in themselves to create a great life for themselves. The the, the love that you should be trying to hold in your physical relationships, these, these intimate relationships, these emotional relationships with people that aren't family, is the same love you're going to have with your children, if they're not an over-possessive kind of controlling person, you're not going to be able to understand that you're in the wrong place anyway. Because, you know, <laughs> everything I say is going to just be sour grapes to you. And, you know, <laughs> you, just stumbled, you just stumbled into, and you, you know, I don't know how you got here. <laughs> but, but, you know, you're going to want your kids to expand and grow. You're not going to hover and suppress them. Because you love them. And most of the mm-hmm. time, people don't know real love up until they have kids. And I can attest to that only because I'm, I'm, I observe people. I observe people. The things people do for their children are sometimes the things that they don't even do for the people that they in relationships with. So, you know, that's why children, having children, is another spiritual and physical experience and growing process for us all. The way you tend, your frequency changes once you have children. You you can't be as selfish. Selfish, not having self-interest from a spiritual perspective. Value, self-worth. There's a difference between having self-worth for oneself, self-value, understanding your own self-worth and your self-value, and being selfish. And most people don't transition into having a selfless nature up until they have children. It seems that's the break. That's the transition where they, 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 you know, that child comes out and they're like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to do whatever it takes to protect this ball of beauty and, you know, be there for them and help them grow and expand and be the best version of themselves. So a great analogy to to help, you know, that person that's hooked is to look at it from that perspective. And if you didn't have parents that did that for you, then it's going to be hard, I guess, from uh, looking at a, other symbols. But if you know another way to look, the way I, I, I've learned how to recreate the algorithms, the 
which I'll call how I move and how I think, right? It's just by looking at things I didn't like around me. I don't like that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Or I did that. I didn't like what what turned out there. I'm not going to do that again. I was green here. Led me to do stuff that, that you know, I can could regret if I stayed there. But I understand the learning process that I that I had to go through in those moments. Let's move forward and not do that again. It's that simple. Deal with it, sit with it, see what it was, move forward and keep that positive perspective on it. That's the same way with these relationships. What did you learn? Got it. Moving forward. And if you love them, you would want to see them move on. And you wouldn't be sending them that stagnant ass energy because energy moves to people. So if you love them, you wouldn't be hovering over them spiritually. You know, if they were a person that interacted in the, in the realm of the subconscious, the dream world, the astral realm, you're probably popping up all the time. And they're like, why is this person always popping up to me? And, you, you, you know, they're, they're seeing you like a dream stalker because you're always popping up and they might not know. They may just have peeks into the astral realm but don't know the things they can do to stop your ass from showing up all the time and, you know, control the situation a lot better. But that's what's happening by you focusing on them and putting all that energy on them. And then, you know, just imagine if you wanted to keep them as a friend and every time they're around, it's like you keep that push it and take it there and it's like eventually you're going to lose a friend because they're going to realize that you can't handle boundaries you're always going to try to be to, you're going to be a, a habitual line crosser to where you're always going to either make things awkward by saying something bringing up some old shit like that person that always bring up some old shit and it's like <laughs> the mood the vibe yeah instantly yeah. go down it's like damn i wish exactly. this motherfucker didn't come around because People want to feel good unless you are just a zombie, right? And you you probably chilling with zombies and y'all talk about shit and just like feeling bad and all that stuff you're talking about. That's cool. But people who are trying to feel like they want to live when they wake up in the morning, they want to feel good. And when they go out and they, when they're amongst people, they want, to, they want to feel good. They want to feel like they're learning. They want to feel like they're having a good time. You coming around with that sprung energy makes people want to bounce from you. So, you know, it's because they can feel it. Like, the way you watching them, it's like you want to go out with them, right? You say, oh, no, we can be friends. But yet when y'all are all out, when you see them talking to somebody else, you over there eyeballing and shit, and you, like, you start, you got that pout face now, and it's like, okay, now the person that, that you used to interact with in that intimate fashion, feel uncomfortable being around you because now they feel guilt. They feel guilt because they're seeing what they're doing to you emotionally. And it's that, like, it's like a mind fuck. It's, uh, it's, it's, it, it ruins their vibes. And then they're going to try everything they can do to avoid you from that moment on, and you're going to lose a good friend if it was deeper just by holding that shit just to, like, mm-hmm. take it. Because people tend to only change when they have, when they can see their self-interest in it. People are only interested in shit when they can see their own self-interest in it, which I understand. It's just, we're about growing, right? You want to grow, you want to move, and you want to grow, so we seek out things that help us do this. So that's why I'm bringing that up. It's another perspective. If you want to keep these friendships even after the relationship is over, you can't be bitter and stuck like that because they're going to feel it and they're going to just avoid you. And they could have been oh, yeah. a good contact. <laughs> I, I you think, know, they could have been a I, good contact. I, I mean, I've been on, you know, you know, and I can speak to that. I've had experiences just like that where it's like the person would bring up the past and stuff like that. It's like, dude, I'm just trying to chill and be friends, you know. Why you got to bring up this this stuff, you know? Um, and it, and it's very true. You do lose people, and you do lose, you know, that person wanting to be around you because it's like they don't. They want to move past it, you know. They want to evolve, just like you said, you know, and just understand that, you know, sometimes things just don't work. 
you know, that doesn't mean that you're a bad person or the other person is a bad person. You guys just didn't work out for the best for each other. That doesn't mean that you can't, you know, wish the best for them, you know, or be like that person, oh, if I can't have them, nobody else can. It's like, well, who get the hell out of here? Who wants that? You know, who wants that possessive controlling energy? You know, nobody really likes to be told what to do, you know. Um, hold on a sec. Go ahead, Boyd. And let me see you about this. All right, yeah. But, yeah. So, yeah, you got to just really want to just if you want to grow and you don't want people to suppress you and you want people to be able to move on and not make you feel weird, if that's the only angle in which you can shift your the way you're looking at things from, there you go. Switch it. And I want to say now, like, if you're listening in from someplace, because someone brought this up to me from the last show, once we go into the after hour, Nobody can call in, and it ends. The whole show ends. Even the stream, I believe, ends. The only way you can continue with us into the after hour is by calling in. And um, if you have a question from any platform, even Facebook, I'll get the message. Or if you would like to call in, the number is 215-383-5822. Again, the number is 215-383-5822. And what you do is you press 1. And then that way I'll be able to see you pop up with like a question mark. And then when we decide to open up the lines for phone calls, we'll chat. But, yeah. Once we go into like people, I'm sure, because people, I know people listen to the stream and it just stops in mid, like, while we're talking. That's because you have to be on the phone. So, my bad, y'all. I promise I'm not just trying to get y'all on the phones. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I don't know. I was like, should we open up the line? Yeah, let's open up the line for, for questions now. And then I got to remind me to get to this this YouTube question, again, it's another question from Oregon Ducks Rule before we close out, okay? Um, but okay. Uh, Erico, 4, 412-9703, what do you have to add or ask? Hey, hey guys, it's me. Hello, it's oh, Bonnie. What's going on? How you doing, Bonnie? Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Busy. <laughs> Clean up and get ready for uh, my oldest birthday party tomorrow. Uh oh! So, Happy birthday, oldest. Yeah. yeah. Well, he turned eighteen in February, believe it or not. Uh, and we postponed his party because the weather was really bad. Um, so we're having it tomorrow. And yeah, I just wanted to say um, I called in late tonight because two of them didn't want to go to sleep. <laughs> the two little ones, but uh, that you were talking about, um, like the selfless love, like and how everything changes when you when you have kids, and I can a hundred and ten percent attest to that because uh, I have four of them. <laughs> and what's go. also kind of crazy, yeah, what's also kind of crazy is not even just it. Well, one is finding the balance, like you were saying. Um, there's a huge difference between being selfish. And having self-love. And I think that there's been, it's like almost every other generation or something, there's, like, the balance gets flip-flopped. So, like, where my parents were, like, they were the boss and their focus was on them and their relationship. And then we as the kids kind of came second, which I'm not saying if that's right or wrong. It seems like then the next generation goes the complete, like, other end of the spectrum where all they do is take care of their kids they forget to take care of themselves and i am i've been guilty of that i'm going to admit to that right now but it's like well it's almost kind of like my parents didn't pay enough attention to me so i'm never going to do that to my kids i'm never going to make my kids feel like that 
but then you go so far to the other extreme that you forget to take care of yourself and do things for yourself and explore things. That, you know what I mean? It's all about the kids, 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 kids. And now it's like we're seeing that shift back where people are saying, you know, self-love is important and it's, it's the right thing to do is to be taking care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anybody else. And it's funny because I've raised... I've been raising kids for 18 plus years now. So I, with my older two, I was surrounded by the people who were, like, everything is about your kids. Like, everything. And I'm not saying don't take care of your kids or anything like that. But it's it's where it's so intense where some people even, like, project, like, they what, what they wanted to be when they grow up. Like, that's what my kids are going to do. Or, you know... I didn't have this when I was a kid, so you're going to have ten times of that. You know, like, it's it's a little bit hard to explain. Do you, do you understand what I'm getting yeah, at? Does ba- that make sense? Basically, making any sense? <laughs> basically what you're But then, saying like, is, now is, I'm into self-love. It's, it's off balance. Off balance. Oh, it is. That's, yes. that's what you're yes, saying. Yes, I've it's, seen it in you're both. Just saying, you're, you're saying just find a balance is what you've come to terms with. It's trying to balance it up loud and be well-rounded. You know, right, remember to exactly. take care of yourself and then do what's natural. You're going to naturally want to take care of your children. But you're saying, you know, you're not, you've learned to not be the overbearing type to where, you know, you're like overbearing and you become a stage mom or something like that is what you're basically saying. Um, but yeah, yeah, I feel like when, I feel like when people, if people did, you know, people, you know, well, I know. I'm waiting. I, I've waited to have children to make sure that I didn't, you know, pass on things like my growing pains onto them, basically, right? So, and see, but that's, I know the that's one thing. Amazing. The, 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 the one thing that, that I. Yeah, the one thing that I know, uh, when I, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I, again, I don't have kids, but I know those that do, kind of take care of themselves, they take care of themselves, they still do things for themselves, they, th- that rubs off on their children in a positive way. The, their children right. end up better off for that because they're not getting uh, that residue from the, the you know, the, the, di- the, 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 the discomfort or the, the stress and the, the anger. So it's rubbing off on them in a good way. They tend to have a healthier way because the stress tends to have people – just any relationship, say things in situations where, you know, they wish they didn't say that shit. But then their ego makes them walk off and they never go back and just clear that up. Like, yo, I didn't mean to say that. I was, I was, something happened at, you know, earlier with me today. I was heated. The timing of you and dealing with that, I just blew up and I apologize. If we just could bring ourselves to do shit like that more often, people would have much more clarity and emotionally not as, you know, holding so much pain towards those around them because they're, they're understanding the human experience because we all feel the same thing. So they, so when I say that to someone, yo, I've had a, you know, crazy day and I just blew up that person they're going to realize, wait a minute, I've had days like that too. So there's clarity in it all. And there's a, there's a understanding in it all and a common ground in it all. And it's a human experience that we can all relate to. And it's basically what's missing when it comes to like cultural divides. It's like, we tend to act like, and I'm digressing, but we tend to act like these people over there aren't human. They're not going through the same kind of human experiences and emotions just because they're culturally different, they dress different, they look different, they live on the other side of the world. No, the, the things that human beings go through inside, that's across the board. It's all the same. And that's why uh, it's key that people focus on the exterior because the only way you can do some of the things that people do to other people because they look different is if you don't see them as internally the same. Because it's hard to do see, something to – what were you about to say? No, I was just going to say I wanted to point two things out real quick um, that we were saying about 
like basically apologizing and taking accountability for your own behavior is immensely important to be doing when you've got kids and especially if you blow up with the kids for two reasons one is to show them like well one show them how you know take accountability for your actions and and your emotions and how you respond to your emotions and teach them that because that's extremely important and having a kid that's on the spectrum I'm telling you what uh, I mean I'm obviously thankful for him for the obvious reasons but the fact that he came first, I learned so much more that I was able to pass on to my other three kids about teaching accountability and being account- accountable for my own actions. Now, my parents taught me some of that, too. I was pretty independent as a kid. But teaching them that you are allowed to be angry, you're allowed to have these emotions, but you are not allowed to act angrily towards other people. And if and when you do you need to step back and say, hey, you know what, I was wrong for the way I reacted to you. And if X, Y, Z happened, you know, earlier in the day, you know, identifying with that and letting that person know, too, that, like, what you did, I got upset about, but I got overly upset because of this other stuff that happened. It wasn't just you. What you did wasn't really that bad. And I have spent the past, well, 16 years, because he was little, obviously, in the beginning, you know, doing that for them and hopefully teaching them those skills about, look, I'm sorry, I feel bad about what I did, I'm going to try not to do it again, and I'm going to be better in the future, rather than going, oh, well, you know, you said this and it made me do this. No, that's not how things work. Like, you're in control of one person only, and that's yourself. Nobody else can make you do anything. Like, so there was, there was that part of it. And then, like you were saying about identifying with other, teaching that empathy, like, Everybody's got stuff going on that you don't know anything about. Whether they live, like you said, on the other side of the world or right next door to you, like you have to treat people the way you want to be treated, basically. You know, it's just very, very important things to be self aware of, especially when you're raising kids. Like, I I just think that was probably one of the most important things I've ever taught my kids was just to take accountability and apologize when you're wrong. Like, you, you've got to let people know that, you know, what you're going through or what you're dealing with doesn't reflect on them. You know what I mean? It, it's not, you know what I mean? So, you, know, you know, another thing that's helped me out, too, because this goes back to something that's very important, and it ties to the topic of our show because it's, it's to get that deeper relationship with people to where, you know, you learn, you feel like you took something from it, you got to have communication. To, to be able exactly. to learn deeper aspects of one another. So what I've learned is also to let, I'll just say you made me mad when you did this, but to explain why that triggered me. Because what right. triggers right. us is from a past experience. So we don't like something because of an event that happened, and that's why. So, so some event made you not like spiders. So if I threw a spider on you and it, freaked you out and I didn't know <laughs> and you, you're like you're crying I'm like oh shit if you say when I was growing up and you know something happened and it you know my face swelled up and it really traumatized me then I understand how much of a red point that is for you spiders and I get it I understand you know because we all feel fear I, I'm connecting with you from that place of understanding what it's like to feel fear the human experiences, right? And that's that's right. what I'm saying. I learned to ex- explain why, you know, instead of just yeah. making it like, like you know, people tend to be bossy because they can't wait to be a boss because maybe they felt like they were bossed around. Like, I can't wait till I grow up so I can boss people around, you know. So, so they're like, no, because I said so. And it's like, but, you know, as a kid, I always wanted to know why. Uh, and I still, yes. and that's that's part of exploring and understanding and learning about life is that why question is very important. So yeah, I like to tell people why. So yeah, okay, yeah, no, think, yeah, Bonnie. Like like always, you you always very informative, Bonnie. I can't wait to listen to your show. You know, I'm waiting. Oh, I'm waiting you. for you to hit. Me. I'm, waiting, I, to oh hit, my I'm waiting for you to hit me up. Like I'm starting tonight. Tonight's my first night. I'll definitely listen and, and stuff like that. You know, I uh, I had my very first interview last night, and like 
I'm, what I'm trying to do is do one to two, air one to two interviews per week based on a topic and then talk a couple of days a week, just me babbling or whatever <laughs> on a podcast. Yeah. And people had, were praising this Anchor app, so I downloaded it. I emailed all the people that I'm interviewing my information, you know, like, this is what you need to do, blah, 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 blah. So I get on a call last night, and um, I'm going to drop a name here. I don't know if you know Amber Renee. She's from Australia. She's a um, basically like a transformational coach. Um, and nah. it kept cutting out every five minutes. We would get disconnected. Mm. And I'm like, I, I was already a little bit nervous, but I was trying to stay calm and cool. You know, I had my notes, my questions and whatnot. And it disconnected. And I'm like, what is going on here? So we get back. Luckily, she got back on, and it disconnected again. And I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. I'm like, the, inter- the universe is, like, testing me. Like, how much do you want this? How Try. bad do you want this? Like, you know? Try and, horseshoe. There's, there's something called horseshoe? horseshoe radio. Horseshoe radio. And it's free. And it's okay. through, con- like, conference call. I don't know. Were you doing video with this lady? No, I didn't. I haven't started video yet because I didn't know. Okay. I didn't okay, know how we'll to like, like capture video, like record it like ahead of time and then air it later. Um, yeah, check out I, check out Horseshoe. Okay, it's another one, and, and I've one. I've listened I've listened to someone that uses it before, and it seems to work just like Block Talk in a sense to where people get a call in number. It's not as okay. like, detailed as as like in terms of like the graphic outline of how they designed the, the the blog talk inter, interface and all that but it's, mm-hmm. it's it works so test test that out test i that will out. i'm gonna and, check uh, it out because i need i uh i was supposed to have another interview son today and i told her we had to postpone and then another one for sunday who's actually i'm not going to drop this name yet but i'm super excited about and I'm like, you got like, what the heck's going on here? So I ended up somehow connecting, kind of like I do with you guys, with this guy who only does Anchor, but his format is different than mine. And he messaged me today. He was like, hey, thanks for liking my post, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, my gosh, maybe you can answer my question, because I already emailed tech support. And he said, yeah, that's a glitch, like, that they need to fix. And I'm going, oh, so this isn't going to be fixed. <laughs> this isn't, like, a problem with my phone or me. Like, this is an ongoing issue. So I do need to find, I will, I will check that out because I need to find something else because I can't keep telling people. Like, I finally took the jump and sent out the emails and was like, we're going to start, blah, 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 here's your questions and, and this and that. And then it's like, oh, no, psych, you know, I'm just kidding. We're not doing this yet because i got to figure this stuff out. Yeah. But uh, I no, appreciate, but that's what's I appreciate up. the tip. And send, yeah, me, um, send me some links to wherever you posted and all that. You know, I would like to check it out. Because I, I had awesome, never heard yeah. of this. I'd never heard of the lady you, you just mentioned before. But I'm also real okay. bad with names. So I am you know. too. I'm terrible. I have so many yeah. notes written. It's not even funny. Because everybody has Instagram Somebody. handles and their Facebook name is different, written like the regular name. And it's like, ah. So. Yeah. But yeah, no, definitely. But, um, and, and, and I want to, um, yeah, thank, thank you for uh, listening in and interacting with us, Bonnie. It's always cool. Oh yeah, definitely. I um, I just wanted to say one last thing about what we were just talking about, and um, you were you, uh, see, I lost my thought. You were talking about um, the questions and answering why and explaining to people why things upset you, and that was another thing that um, I really learned with Nick because uh, he used to have meltdowns, like horrible meltdowns, and it took years honestly to figure out like what his triggers were and one of those things was like what you were talking about was trying to figure out like you and I and, and a lot of more typical people were able to say okay well this is what triggered me and this is why I got upset but with him he would just he would go blank or he would black out or he would forget or he would have like literally no idea what it was that would trigger him so it was like a puzzle like every time he'd have a meltdown in school I'd, I'd be questioning people like do you did this happen? Did this happen? What happened right before? Can you tell me what the conversation was? Like, who was he talking to? To teach him that skill of being aware of the process of whatever the, the trigger was, identifying the trigger, 
and his body, the way his body responded. So, like, did he get hot? Did he start to pace? Was he getting angry? Was he feeling sweaty? Like, all these different things, these body cues. And then how did he react to that? And then kind of working backwards. Like, okay, so this is what happened, and let's go backwards to, you know, what was it that triggered you so that the next time he ran into that issue and he would start to feel these body cues, he could, what he does most of the time now is he walks away, which is amazing because from having full-blown two-hour meltdowns, running him to the hospital to sometimes he'll yell, which is totally normal, but he walks away. He just, he's managed over the past I don't know, 12 years maybe, to identify that in himself. And then this is why I got up, like address that person and say, this is this is why I got upset. And you said this and it made me think about that. And then this happened and then boom, you know. And so I think it's it's really important to go back and tell the person, e- either look, it really wasn't your fault, but this is why I got upset or you did this and that really triggered me or whatever it was. So that your relationship, if you want to have one with this person, can continue to grow. Um, and or you know, sometimes another, in case, and no, I was just to say, some cases add, people don't respect that, and then you're like, okay, well, I can't be around you because you don't respect, you know, these boundaries that I need to have or whatever it is. It, so. Exactly what I was going to say because sometimes people don't want to hear why they're too much no. into whatever it is they're going through in their mind to where they feel like. They'll make it. They'll make it seem like you're trying to argue, but it's like all I'm trying to do is tell you more about me so you can understand. You see what right. I'm saying? And it's like in oh, those yeah. moments, what I've learned to do is to just walk away because what'll happen is is it'll turn into an argument when all you were trying to do from a pure space was actually show somebody things about you so they can get to know you better. Just from the perspective, like, I like to know the people in front of me. I like to know things about them. And some people don't really care that much. Or it's unconscious, though, too. Like, I think, too, they don't understand that not everything is an argument if I'm just going into details about what, what it was and why. And some people don't care. They feel like they want everything rushed because they're rushing all the time, too. But... No, you're completely right. Or that they they right. get they're like, oh well, nothing I did caused that, or you know, it it goes yeah. back to well, you know, I didn't do anything wrong, or you know, I mean, there's there's lots of different reactions people can have, and like you said, people people are rushed, or they throw back at you. I heard you mention this about bringing stuff up from the past. This is a different situation. Like, I don't want to hear it. That was in the past. But that's done and over with. And it's like, well, yeah, but this helps explain for the future. Like, I'm not trying to, like you said, I'm not trying to cause an argument or or throw stuff in your face or anything like that. I'm trying to explain to you why I I reacted the way I did. Like, I'm taking responsibility for how I reacted, and I'm just telling you what your part in it was. And like you said, some people just don't want to hear it. What what I learned to do is I never bring up, I try my hardest never to bring up the past regarding what the other person did, but I'll always bring up, my past from what had happened to me by way of other things. That way the person in front of me doesn't get defensive thinking that I'm blaming them for how I feel. Because when the moment the moment I the moment you bring up what that person did in the past, you're right, they're gonna say, but that was in the past. And then it really it really defeats the purpose of what you were what you were trying to get out of the situation. Right. Just showing them Showing them, just showing them why you reacted a certain kind of way. But if you can find something that will give you that same, give them that same clarity that doesn't have anything to do with them, then they'll be able to listen without getting defensive because it has nothing to do with them. Right, that's a good they can point. Stay, because people they can stay in a, automatically shut stay down. In a sympathetic, exactly. They'll stay in a sympathetic kind of spirit rather than going into defense mode based off of, oh, here they go again bringing up something I did. <laughs> You know, so so if you keep them out of it, then they're able to empathize. Right. People like that, that you got to be that strategic while talking to. And that's just something I developed from having the, the purest of intentions going up to people in situations and trying to explain myself and realizing that they feel like I'm blaming them and it gets – into like they get defensive and it's like damn this wasn't where i was trying to make it go i wish i never even came up here 
so I learned to just try to try my hardest to not, because because a lot of times what people say is they're like, well, tell me wh- when I did that or tell me what I did. It's like I know better than that because you know, yeah, right? You're gonna tell me no, you didn't, or you're gonna then bring up something I did, and it's like that's not what this is supposed to go into. I'm just trying to show you why I feel this kind of way. I'm not trying to go into the yeah, but you did this one day to me, so. So so why you know that's why I just like that's why I said I never bring up what they I try my hardest and sometimes you can get into that momentum where like they do it to you so you do it and it's like fuck I'll try it. I didn't want to do that because I wasn't trying to be the play the blame game shit but yeah but yeah that's that's one of my strategies that I've I've learned on my own through trial and trial trial and error is to just keep them out of it and just go back to because a lot of times we've experienced something on many different fronts, so we can relate it, relate to something that's going on with something, someone right in front of us without bringing them up. And therefore, right. you kind of take a detour in your more strategic way of getting what you want out of the situation without shutting them down. So, I think it comes yeah. to a point, too, sometimes, I mean, some people you kind of have to have relationships with, at least to some extent, but it, it gets to a point where it's like, if this becomes like a repetitive thing, can't talk to this person without walking on eggshells, it's time to think about, do you really need to be, like, does this person really need to play that much of a role in your life anymore? And that's just something I've, like, learned, you know, as I've gotten older, you know, okay, so every time I go talk to you, you get defensive. Well, I'm not trying to, you know, belittle you or talk badly about you or or anything like that. I'm just trying to have an open conversation with you about, you know, things that are happening between us. And if you can't handle hearing that, then maybe you and I just don't need to be, you know, around each other anymore. Like, I have I think we had a conversation a couple weeks ago about toxic people and, you know, um, just starting to cut people out of your life because it's like no matter what you do or say, it's always negative, negative, negative. Like you can't talk them positively at all. Like it, it just doesn't work. Um, yep. And I've recently com- cut people communi- out of my com- life. Communication <laughs> issue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Angelica? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you just chilling, huh? I'm chilling, listening, because it's like, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, all of this is really, you know, like we were saying earlier, it's just a reflection of us, you know, our growth, our evolution. So, you know, um, teaching certain things to, you know, our children and how we want to be treated is a reflection of that because our children look to us, um, you know, as an example. And that's why exactly. I think we have to use you know, we have to express to them and show them by, you know, what we do and how we interact and to let them know. It's like, you know, I'm not perfect, you know, but it's like, you know, that is part of um, the process is to learn from your mistakes. You know, I shouldn't have reacted this way. You know, I should try to do this, you know, and um, to lead by example, basically, and, you know, to... um, to know that sometimes, you know, things, you know, you make mistakes, but that's part of growing. It's like how are you going to know where to improve if you don't, you know, make a mistake here or there or you don't find fault or a way to improve something, you know. Um, And that is really, you know, the whole focusing on the positive versus the negative instead of seeing, you know, where, you know, you you failed or where you lacked, you know, you see it as opportunities to get better at those certain things. And, you know, to cultivate that and to try, you know, to to be better and to do better, you know. So Yeah. And I think that so, another good part another part of that too is is just showing them, I think kids sometimes get a bad rap and get the short end of the stick just in that, like, we as adults sometimes, and some adults, expect the kids to hold it together better than we expect from ourselves, where, like, so a kid's having a tantrum, or he's crying, or he's having a meltdown, and you're getting frustrated, 
um, and this is hypothetical, and it's also happened to me, but you're getting frustrated and you're trying to work with the kid and the kid can't stop crying and it's like you're getting frustrated, more and more frustrated because he's crying and, 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 you know, and I've got four. So once they all start in, forget about it. Like it's just like I'm going on the porch. Like I need to get out of the noise for a minute. But uh, like my my older two were throwing – starting to fit at each other, like, so loud that when I closed the big, like, the wooden door to my house, I could still hear them outside. And, but I think sometimes we hold kids to a higher standard than we hold ourselves, whereas, like, if they're having these these emotional, um, you know, I don't want to call them issues, but responses to things, um, and we're going, oh, well, that, you can't act like that. You can't do that. You can't be like that. You're making too much noise or this, that, whatever, whatever negative reaction that we can have them. And here, here's us. We're getting louder and louder and louder and louder, trying to get them to be quiet, which never works, by the way. And, but not thinking about the fact that, like, I'm yelling at you to stop yelling. Like, what sense does that make whatsoever? Like, I'm not setting an example for you at all at this point. Because everybody's just yelling, and I'm just showing you that if you're not doing what I want you to do, that yelling at you is the way to get you to stop doing that. Now, that that just leads to angry little children. You know what I mean? Like kids running around yelling and screaming at each other all the time. And I've seen, I've seen it happen. I just, I'm not perfect. I know I'm not perfect. I know I've definitely yelled and screamed and cussed at my kids. Um, but the important part, like after that, one is obviously not to make it a habit. Um, but two is that, that acknowledgement, like, I lost it, I'm sorry, this is what's going on, you know, at, at least to whatever age level they are at the time, you know, an explanation of why, and, you know, mommy's going to try to do better next time. Like, next time something like this happens, I'm going to try to, you know, take deep breaths like I've been teaching you and calm myself down and walk away if I have to and then start over again, you know. But I think, like you yeah. were saying, just leading by example is just so crucial. But some, I, I've seen parents and I've seen it in myself sometimes that we're just we're holding them to a higher standard than than ourselves and they're going okay but I'm just doing what you're doing like what do you want me to do differently they're, just, so. they're nothing but an image of you a fraction of you so you know that's that's exactly, exactly. what's going on hey right. hey Bonnie you know what just came to me while you while you were talking tonight when we have like we haven't we haven't done one yet this month but we have like round tables right where we just let we just keep the line open. It's just like a discussion, like different people will just, will all be talking. And I was like, I'm going to invite Bonnie. Like, would you like to, like when you have the time, whenever oh, we're doing awesome. a round table yeah. discussion, whenever we're doing a round table discussion, I'm going to hit, we'll hit you up and we'll see, you know, if you can come on, of course, because I know you do a lot, but yeah, I feel like, I feel like you got a great perspective. That would be awesome. be a part of that. Yeah, yeah I'd so. be honored. That's, that's, that's really great. Thank you. When do you guys no do you guys have like a set get like a well, time that you typically or a day or anything just so I can keep Well and Helica and I out. haven't talked or and Helica and D and I haven't talked yet about when we'll do it okay. this month, but it's about that time okay. I'm sure for us to talk about when we'll do the round tables because the you know, when I when I came up with the whole idea to do it, it was more so to to have just that, a round table where different people that have valuable perspective, we all just sit with no topic maybe or a topic and just kind of just throw it around. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like you'd be a great addition to that. Oh, yeah, you thank know. you. I really so when, when, whenever that. you want to do it, you know, it's not anything that's mandatory, of course, but, you know, it's just if you want to no, be a part of it, you can join it. So, but yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up the lines for for other people that, that may have a question. Okay. And, um, and but yeah, it was great having you uh, w- uh, with us tonight again, Bonnie. And I hope your family is, you know, doing well and you guys continue to have prosperity and all that and good vibes. Thank you. I'm actually, I was really excited to see your um, your post about uh, with and how it has um, jewelry and the gems and the music. I was just like blown away. Like I'm not even kidding. I was like, I had no idea. This is amazing. And then I, so crazily, you were talking about. Um, this is real quick. The singer. Uh, thought. Oh, what's her name? Sade. So ask, yes. Did she just yeah, come out yeah. with new music after like eight years or something? I heard it on. I got an Amazon Echo Dot thing from my husband, and. 
it was on my flash briefing, music briefing this morning. I'm like, I know that name. I've heard that name. Boyd talked about her. I'm like, so I just like got, like stopped everything and just was listening to what they had to say, which was really cool. So I just want to throw that out yeah, there. She got, but she she has great music that stimulates that heart chakra and puts you in a real nice zen state where like you'll think before acting. If you listen to Sade, she'll lower you. She'll like, but see, some people, if you're too high, then you won't be able to appreciate it because a lot of times people don't understand how to use music. Like you not all the time. You're not supposed to match your energy with your music all the time. Sometimes the music it sets you into different vibrations to do you know oh, yeah. do some magical shit with feeling. So if you're too high, you know you got to b- bring in a musical vibration that's more of a you know lay back kind of relaxed tone to relax and really be able to be in a place of creativity and you you know slow the mind down. She's perfect for that. Perfect for that. And yeah, I, I've been talking about her yeah. a couple times like last month and this month. Well. Well, no, it was once last month, or I don't know when it was, because I was on my way to a show in the astral realm of hers, and then later, you know, and then, yeah, she came out with some music, so. But that's, like, how I was telling you. Remember when you said you have these dreams, and then some shit yes. happened in the realm? That's what yes. that is. Like, again, all that happened with me dreaming about going to a Sade show was the fact that she probably was working on music or they were her team and all of them were sitting and building up a lot of energy that was moving towards the release of this song and I just tapped into it in the astro realm. And see that that's, that's it. it. That's so cool to me. And yeah, I was just, I was shocked that I remembered the name because I'm terrible, terrible with names. I remember the name and then remember it at the same time, like I heard the name and I'm like, it's a breakthrough. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Like I said, I take yeah. notes on everybody. I'm like, this person is this, and blah, 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 blah. But so yeah, that's that's yeah. awesome. I will um, I will let you guys go. You can um, put me back on mute, and I look forward to hearing you guys again maybe Monday. Um, I usually miss the Monday show, but I'm gonna try to catch up this week again. So. Yeah. Uh, all right, Bonnie. You have a good night. All right, awesome, all right, Bonnie. You thank you. All right, thank you. Bye bye. All right. So area code two zero three. One six six two. Do you have anything to add or a question? Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, I can. Hear, we can hear you. We hear you. Can you hear me? Good and like loud and clear because I'm talking through a Bluetooth headphone. Yeah. Okay. No, you're clear. Okay. So, um, I was I listen to not every everything of your um your show, but I do I listen like the part I did tune in, um, was about. I guess. Let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be vulnerable right here because this is this is actually something I am dealing with, um, letting go of a person. However, mm-hmm. I think I'm definitely healing at that time because, as you said, like, um, I think you said you was in tune more with your heart when you're letting go of the person, when you're kind of just like detaching yourself or, you know, not contacting them or, you know, interacting with well, them as much. You're you're well, kind of from the perspective of realizing that they're human too and they have needs and they have a life and feelings and it's good. You got to let them express that. You see what I mean? So yeah, you're in right. your heart. You got that in mind. Yeah. Right. So, but see, I think what I, I uh, struggle with more than anything, even though I am trying to let go, it's, it's more of maybe a, that, a per, that 1% of hope that something can come out of it maybe in the future. So I still try to, you know, leave the uh, lines of communication open and say hi and be cordial and stuff like that. Um, this person is in a relationship as of right now, and I'm still cordial, but, like, you know, I was hurt by the person a long time ago. And even though I, I'm, it's like I'm, I'm trying to let go of situations in the past, but it's like, as you said, like that sprung energy, even though that's not the way I act, it's more of a, a feeling when that person is around, it's like you're trying, it's like, it's more of like, I feel like I'm forcing myself, you know, because I know reality of the situation, but I'm, you know, trying to force myself to be kind and nice, because I genuinely care for a person like that, you know, but I struggle with, okay. so let's, I guess it's let's, more let's of, see Angelica, let's see what Angelica got for you regarding this situation. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, Angelica. <laughs> um, 
Well, to me, it 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 sounds like you said, you know, you you still hold that hope, you know. So it's like um, you are allowing that energy to, you know, take your focus and, you know, continue to kind of, you know, like you said, do things that maybe you don't really want to do that's for your best interest. You know, and it's hard sometimes, especially, you know, when you do care for that person, you know. But like we were saying earlier, you got to just let people be who they are and sometimes, you know, really look at that in a perspective of, you know, well, this person is is moving on and is with somebody else. It's like maybe it's right. time for me to to, you know, understand that I can be happy too. I deserve to be that happy too. It doesn't necessarily mean that I have to be with this person, you yeah. know. Um, go ahead. Um, and, and that's I'm more spiritually inclined too as far as that. It's, it's not like I don't know certain things like that. Like I question things like that, like, damn, why are you, why is this person still messing with your your energy or whatever. Like, you go in and you see them and you say hi, but at the same time, it's like it's like you, you tune out. Like, when they're speaking to you and they're talking, you know, normal having a conversation, it's like you tune out and you mm-hmm. kind of go down memory lane or you feel some type of uh, bitter energy. And, I, and like I said, I genuinely love this person, so I I know the whole, if you love them, let them go. You know, and, and, I'm, and I'm working on that. And like Boy said, he said about, you know, the, the key to getting over and letting go is to have self-interest, and I've been working on myself. Like I said, from a spiritual perspective, more or less, getting in tune with myself and my actions and not being so reactive over situations. However, it's still a struggle. It's like two people within myself, you know, the, the, mm-hmm. the spiritual or the new person that's, you know, trying to understand things and overcome obstacles and situations and looking at out from a from an outer body experience it, experience mm-hmm. then the person I guess in the past where the victim, you know, who was victimized and hurt over the situation and, you know, not feeling good enough for that person because of other things like not having, you know, yourself situated, you know, comparing yourself and stuff like that. So I always say to myself, maybe it's it's my insecurity that I feel that maybe something that I need to fulfill within myself, avoid, like, you know, not having my own things situated that I feel like I'm not happy. Um, mm-hmm. Like, that's what I, from a spiritual, like, perspective, that's how I look at it. Like, I know that it's mostly about myself. But when I get right. around this person, it's like a trigger. It's like, it's like yo, I want to love you. I want to let you go. And I, and, I, and I always pray for this person every night, you know what I mean, for just, mm-hmm. you know, you know, success and just think, peace and love and stuff like that. But think, at the same, go ahead. So go again, ahead. And, and and I'm not talking. I'm not trying to. I don't mean this from the cold perspective, but by you know, out of sight, out of mind, right? But yeah. to keep them in mind. Okay, we know self-interest from the perspective of how does this make me feel. Does this does this does, does thinking about this person cause me to feel in a way in which I get depressed and don't want to act in things regarding my own life, my dreams, and other relationships, or does thinking to this person, like you said, you already told us that it kind of gives you some bitter feelings sometimes. So we already know that it's not like I, I'm not saying don't pray for this person, but if they've moved on, you can keep them in mind. You can still pray for them, but you need to realize that you have you have somebody that's perfect for you in the wing that you're not able to 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 magnetize to connect with because you're 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 stuck with this mm. person in mind, and it's keeping you from going out and finding this person that's looking for you. This that person you're thinking about, they have their they have their they're already matched up. They have their you know what they what they're looking for. You deserve the same thing. That's where the self interest comes in. 
your self-interest where it's like, okay, I can still care about this person, but Mm -hmm. I can still pray for this person, but I deserve what they have too because I am human and you also deserve the things that you desire also. Okay, so you got to, yeah. That that's exactly what I'm saying. As far as this is what I mean by the the outer body experience, like kind of looking just like monitoring myself, you know, and my thoughts and stuff like that, and just understanding like the emotion and everything. And and as far as the reality of the situation, like okay, I do need to move on, and I and I have spoke to other people, and you know, um, and more more or less to try to figure myself out more than anything. That's kind of where I've been focused on more than anything, but. Um, it's just, I say like it's a battle within. It's like a war because it's like I know this already, you know, the self-interest and, and working on yourself and improving yourself. But it's like, and I don't interact with that person at all. I don't contact them like that. I do work in an environment I can guarantee, around I can them guarantee from, at you, times. but I can guarantee you probably look at their pictures from time to time on whatever platforms no. there are. No, I, so, I haven't, and and I haven't. That's what I'm saying is I feel like I'm in the human process. Like a couple, you know, this has been for a while, but, you know, last year I would say or a couple of years ago, like I would probably be on that, you know, stalker type of, you know, looking at their pictures and, and even like thinking that I'm I'm a heel by looking at them with their, their significant other. Like, okay, I got to torture myself type of thing and, and motivate myself. Like crazy thoughts like that you know, put myself through pain so I can use my pain as motivation. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. But now I've been doing better because I, I told myself, yo, I'm not looking at the pictures no more. I'm not doing that to myself well, you, no more. I'm going to move forward. And I haven't looked at the well, pictures. You, I haven't. Go when ahead. you meet someone, when you meet someone and you guys connect, you'll realize that you have something that I'm not – trying to diss them but that's far greater and and deeper and you will that's i i believe it seems like for you when you'll stop feeling like you missed out on some kind of opportunity when you have perspective on a on a better yeah. situation and the only way I mean, you can I, do that is if you mm-hmm. go you know if you put yourself out there and you can't necessarily do that by uh Holding, holding, you know, holding yourself stuck. Because you say it when you see them, you'll say hello. So out of sight, out of mind. And if you keep them in sight, then that means they, they're going to stay in mind. Mm. Right? Well, out of I sight, say, out of yeah, mind. Yeah, right. But I'm saying I don't, I don't I think about them 24-7 like I used to. It's it's like, you know, it's, I, like I said, I've been open-minded. I have wanted to talk to other people. And try, you know, um, well, that's it didn't work out. But Look I, at it that it's way. like, it's it's more of, I think because I'm such an analytical individual, and I'm it's always racking my brain like what, like why or what or you know those type of questions, those pondering questions. It's like, what about this person has me so, as you would say, quote unquote, stuck? Because it's not just a shallow type of perspective. Yes, they are attractive, right? However, yeah. the thing that made me fall for them, I remember the last thing I said to them, um, I wrote a letter to them one time, and the last thing I said to them was, I fell in love with myself. I think that was like more of a mm-hmm. spiritual enlightenment because th- they had a lot of qualities that I truly was attracted to because it was, th- it was within myself. The qualities well, that I well, loved about them that you was got, you got part many of me. Stuff. Understand though that you got mi- you understand that you have many versions of yourself out there, not just one. So you got mm-hmm. many different versions of yourself. Like when you grow and you reach another level of self understanding, then you meet somebody that that'll match you there. Uh, so you have many reflections that you meet, not just one. People have, there, you have many soulmates. It's just which one do you cap off with and decide? Okay, we're going to grow together. You understand? But you can right. keep you keep you can keep going as you grow. You'll meet people that in that new space that match you 
and and they're they're a version of you. That's what this place is about. This this world we live in, just meeting your mirror image all the time, whether it be mm -hmm. people, you know, all the time. But you know, when you say you're thinking back, you know, that's where you have to understand the mind is a dangerous thing. That that term, right? The mind is a dangerous thing. If you're using it in a way in which you haven't realized is doing you a disservice. A lot of times yes, yes, we'll think absolutely. we're doing ourselves some kind of service by overanalyzing mm -hmm. and sitting in something, but really what it's doing <laughs> is it's wrapping mm -hmm. you up in, in a rubber band in the sense to where, you know, you're tied in a knot and you you can't get out of it at that point. So, well, so alert, it's, best to look, it's best to try your hardest to not sit Remember, the universe is mental. To sit in mm -hmm. thought that doesn't, again, serve you in progression. Like, thinking about that person, mm -hmm. by now you've learned what you could have learned from it. Like, you should have. It's not serving you anymore. It's just keeping you right. stuck. You see? So you got right, to right. take your thoughts elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I, I, and and yeah. I, think, I think being... Like the whole, this whole, like being more spiritually inclined and learning more about spirituality and just thoughts and everything and just, just evaluating self. I think as far as when I ask those type of questions, it's not just like, oh, I want to be stuck. I, it's more of trying to find out myself and what I like or what type of person or individual I'm truly attracted to and what type of person I want and. You know, because I I back my brain because yeah, you, it, it was. You, you I can felt, do that. You like, can do that with. You can do that without them being the focal point. You can you can use your imagination and take all the best aspects of everybody you've ever met and put mm -hmm. them together into uh a uh, uh, like a shadow of a person in terms of like let's say you know I tend to gravitate towards brunettes myself. Okay. So let's say, you know, I was in your situation and I was like, I'm like, okay, I want to manifest a new brunette. I don't know the person. I don't have a focal point, right? This is how right. you manifest. If you take everything you know from all these books you read, you know, you sit in your mind with a picture. This picture doesn't have to be something that already existed in the realm. It can be something that you create in your mind. And what happens is if you create your own version of a male or a female, that you, anybody wants to manifest, what will happen is if you sit with this at night, lay down, picture a person in your mind, feel it, because the feeling is what makes it resonate out into the realm to where you get something that comes back and comes around you, right? So if you mm -hmm. feel it, what you'll start noticing, just try it. You'll start noticing when you go outside in the world and you're just living your day-to-day -day life, you'll start running into people, projections that look like this person that you created in your mind. Mm. So that's why you got to start being more in-depth about what you want out of life and out of the people in it. So so don't just go from a surface way. Because, yeah, you'll, you'll ma I'll, I'll manifest the br brunette, but is she going to be intellectually inclined enough to keep my interest if I'm just exactly. thinking about her face? No. So what right. you do is, is you picture her and you sitting, yeah, you know, I tend to like, I tend to like, like, like dim lit coffee kind of places with a glass of wine. That's kind of me, right? That's me right there. Mm -hmm. That's my setting, right? So what you, what you do is you go to whatever settings you dig, put her there and have, comp not like in your mind, like out in your, you know, out vocally having a conversation to where like if someone walked by like who are you talking to but but you want to see you guys having conversation and imagine it of a certain tone and feel that tone and feel that that spirit that you're trying to bring she's more than a face right she right, has something right. to offer in conversation so you want to play out these roles and then when you manifest and when you're walking out in your day-to-day -day life when you see that person, like if I were to see that brunette, I would know mm -hmm. there's a higher op chance that this brunette is going to be somebody who who uh, has more 
to offer them a, an exterior presence because I have put out that I want more than that. See, we get what we put out. We know this, right? We, we know this. Everyone will say, I know this, but we don't know how deep it goes, how far the cookie crumbles, right? It, it means all the way down to the very last detail, saying I'm going to create a building, and they're just focusing on that way it looks on the outside. No. If the structure of the building is weak, then the building isn't safe for people to dwell in. So the architect has to focus on the beam structure, how they, if they want to, you know, create the beam structure and um, that, that stability, have it part of the architectural artistic design of the building, then they'll do it from that perspective. But ultimately, the structure is more important than the way it looks. And that's what we miss as humans. We miss that every building process, this is why masonry, the cornerstone, is most important, okay? The cornerstone. Because if that cornerstone's off, okay, in, free, in masonry, the cornerstone is one of the, 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 the most important aspects of the whole craft. Because if that cornerstone is off, your whole building is going to be ge- geometrically off, okay? So okay. the cornerstone... Mm-hmm is very important. And that cornerstone is a foundation, okay, a foundation. Just like when I was telling you, like if you knew, if you went into some building that you worked in and you knew that that architect didn't put any effort into the foundation and just worried about the outside and that building was shaking with the wind, you wouldn't feel safe. It's, it's basically just a, an, an exterior. And it has nothing to offer internally like a person. We can, we can tie a person to a building. There's an internal structure and there's an external structure. So you got to start looking at right. the people you manifest like the buildings you want to walk in. You understand? Right. I but don't want to go but... into a building in New York that has a weak structure. So so you can okay. manifest this person and that has you that has you always thinking about them. There's mm-hmm. another person that exists. You just keep thinking that that's the only person or that's the one you want. But what you have to realize is there's, there's always better. There's always better. There's always a better form of something. There's always growth. So there's somebody right. that has everything that she has that you like plus more. It's a matter of, like, if you and you and her were in a relationship, you would be building together, rising together in yourself. Therefore, you don't need to find a more advanced version because you guys are growing together. But in your situation... Mm-hmm. You can manifest a version that's more refined, I guess I should say, but has the elements that you desire if you just took the time to sit with in your mind and feel, not her, stop thinking about her. You, you're just sending her energy that she's using in her day-to-day life. If you ever feel exhausted, mm-hmm. it might have something to do really? with you always picturing her. Because, yeah, energy actually leaves you like if you're tired from working all day right you're tired because you actually exerted that energy at work whether you were standing or just simply filing papers or typing you're exerting energy so you can you know even the brain thinking alone burns calories so thinking alone exerts energy so you you picture her thinking about her that energy has to go somewhere and it's going to her so i'm saying you is is it mm-hmm. wrong to pray for her? Is it wrong to No, no, uh, no, it's not wrong to pray for her. It's not wrong to pray for her. I, that's I said that already. It's not wrong to pray for her. But you got to understand when saying I'm praying for somebody is on the line between saying I can't get somebody off my mind and I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to say I'm praying for them. You know, you know, you know like there's a thin line between always thinking about somebody and praying for somebody. Like you can go down the line of people you pray for every night. That don't mean you're thinking about them all the time. It's still going back to feeling, you know, wanting to be with them. There's a difference. So don't okay. like, cause, cause sometimes, and I bring that up because sometimes we'll make, we'll come up with rational reasons why we do things. And it's kind of on the borderline of being delusional. And I don't mean that in an offensive way. I mean that in the very definition of the word, meaning, like, mm-hmm. we're not realizing what we're doing while we're doing it. 
and we have this delusion of what we're doing when we're really just stuck on them. We're going to be like, I'm pray. I pray for her. You know what I mean? Like, like you can pray for her still, but you can also remove her from your consciousness and then go to move, direct that energy to something, to someone that is going to give you an energy exchange. It'll be symbi- sim- symbiotic, not you just As giving you off your yeah. energy and having no return. You don't have no return. Right. Then. There's no return. Right, it's right, like right. working at right. your job and not getting a paycheck in two weeks. That's what you're doing. You're working at your mm-hmm. job exerting your energy, and your energy manifested as a return from exerting it is your paycheck every two weeks. If you're visualizing and sending your energy out, you want a return. That's the self-interest thing, but from, a, you know, a pure space of just knowing that you deserve a return in every relationship. You're not getting a return with her. You know, is she... Right, but shouldn't it be unconditional? I mean... Shouldn't it shouldn't yeah, yeah, be yeah, yeah. a condition when you truly love somebody and you genuinely care about them? Like, it's not, like, as you were saying that's, before, that's you know, you shouldn't, yeah, you know. That's fine, but more, you got to balance it out. It's like having more than one kid. You're not always thinking about one. I mean, some parents may have a favorite, but you want to, <laughs> you want to mm-hmm. evenly divide out your energy amongst the three of them. That would be the best thing yeah. to do. You You seem to be focusing on her, and you're not, you're not putting none, no more of your energy into something that will give you a someone that will give you a return. You need to put some mm-hmm. of that energy that you, you love to give to her, which is good. You know, someone's probably doing that for you because you're doing that for her. So that's, that's good. But you wanna, if you want to see a return in an affectionate kind of way, in a relationship kind of way, you should divide some of that energy that you – put in her direction over into sitting with yourself at night and having a conversation with a new person that has all the attributes and emotional uh, things that you love to interact with. And you'll start seeing, I'm telling you, I'm telling you for, for just doing it all the time, you will walk outside and you will start seeing people that look exactly like this person that exists nowhere but in your head. Mm. And mean, that's why, I, that's, I, yeah. that's how okay. deep it goes. That's how deep manifesting goes. And, and Helica, do you have anything to say about this as well? I mean, I know Boyd's talking, so I just want to see if you had anything to say. I mean, I agree with, you know, what Boyd is saying, you know, but it is a process. You do have to find that balance because, you know, what I hear is that you're putting this person, like, oh, I'm praying for this person, I'm praying for this person. It's like, but what about you? You know? What do you mean? What, what do you mean you? by that? As in, it's, like, praying for like, myself? You know, yeah, as in, it's like, you know, you have to put out what you want as well, and that's why it's like it's that balance about, you know, visualizing how you want your next relationship to be, whether it be with this person or not with this person, but your next, you know, I guess, evolution in yourself. It's like, where do you want to be at? What type of relationship do you want to have? You know, how would mm-hmm. you, if, you know, improve the, you know, yourself so that, you know, you're happier in the long run, you know, regardless of that, you know. So it's good and dandy, you know, to pray, um or send positive thoughts to this person, but then, you know, like what you're saying is that you have to spend some time with yourself and, you know, visualizing for yourself things that you want to achieve for yourself and not just, you know, um, because it's going to attract somebody, you know, or or have, you know, somebody or certain things look at you a certain way, but because it makes you feel good and it makes you a better person overall. Um, so well, I think I... I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I think, I think um, that's what I'm saying is I think I am at that stage where it's, it's, I'm trying to find understanding of why I do what I do. As, as Joey, I mean, as Boyd said, like, it might be um, 
the whole thing, like, I might just be doing it because I'm stuck on, on this person. I don't know. However, I, I don't just pray for this person. I pray for a lot of people, everybody, all my loved ones, everybody I care about, genuinely, you know, and myself as well. Um, and as far as, you know, me visualize, using visualization, as far as manifesting another person, I do that as well. I fantasize about stuff like that, meeting another person that would just be ten times better than, you know, the other person. Um, I have done that many times. It's a whole other topic, but I do have issues with uh, believing in general. Things like, you know, like I, I'm pretty sure if you're familiar with the secret, I've always had issues with the law of attraction and truly like saying like believing in the feeling and this and that. Like I believe it's feeling good, you know, but as far as taking that feeling and utilizing that, saying like, this person is, you know that, that what they say, the law of attraction is kind of like make it yours already. Like say you want $100,000 and you're, you're supposed to feel that, that energy like you already have that or treat it like you already have that money. I've always had that internal struggle. Or I guess I'm a skeptic, as you want to call it, where I say, okay, I don't I, truly 100% I, believe all of that, but I believe in feeling good because I have experienced that. I have experienced yeah. feeling good and, and – um, and let me finish it. Or, you know, when I'm, like, say, this is what I have experienced. I know one thing. When I lose something, I say, okay, I'm not going to rack my brain trying to look for it because I know I'm going to find it when I'm not trying to find it. And it always pops up. Anything that I'm looking for always pops up. So I believe situations like that because I've experienced that many times. But I haven't, I guess, get, come to grips with, you know, just visual visualizing you know, the future and feeling good and stuff like that, as I say, the law of attraction. I, I was never a 100% believer in that. I, I've always had a struggle with that. But that's a whole other thing. Okay, you, you, you're, using, you're using the law of attraction just by saying, when I, knowing what you need, making that distinction of what you need and then letting it go and taking it away from your mind, and then you say you mm -hmm. always get it. That's the law of the attraction. There's no difference. The only difference is, oh, is you're not focusing it all the time. Yeah, oh, you're not focusing okay. it all, all focusing yeah. on it all the time to where you you create resistance. See, so, you know, it's like it's like when, um, like as a male, I had to learn growing up. The more and more pressure you put on a female you like, the more and more she wants to run away from you. That's okay? true. <laughs> so, so yeah. the, that's the law of attraction. So, so what, you, what, what they'll tell you when you read enough of the books and get enough different perspectives, they'll say, yeah, you visualize it, but then you let it go. You let it go out there because what you can do with your focus is you can block things. And that's why when you're in a car and you're taking a road trip and you want to get to mm -hmm. that destination, it takes forever in terms of your perception of space-time. It seems like it takes longer on your way there than it does on your way home. That's because you let it go. You don't want to go home necessarily. You had such a good time, so you let get, you didn't focus on getting home. So therefore, you get home faster. So you're using the mm -hmm. law. Of, you haven't tied it all together. You're using the law of attraction just by saying, by by noting what you need, letting it go, and saying, I always find it. That's how it works for you the best, and that's how you need to hone in on your skill there. That's where knowing thyself takes place knowing how it works mm -hmm. for you. And that seems to be the way it works for you. But understand, prayer and visualization are one and the same. The one thing it is, is just one is, yeah, one and the same. It's focus and intent towards something, said thing, said person. They're the same. It's people just having uh, semantics and cultural semantics have made it to where people can't tie it together, just like the zone and mm -hmm. meta the the zone is the same as a trance. People in these different spaces, sports use I get in the zone and spiritual places say I'm in a trance. They're one and the same. It's just people tend to have compartmentalized meaning separated things to where they can't draw the bridges themselves. They're being they're the same thing, they just have different words that are explaining it. Prayer and the secret are the same. One is just more detailed and works stronger. See, just sitting down and saying, I want my dog to have good life, my mom to have good life, and money to come to me, these are words. 
words, what do they say about words when it comes to just relationships? What is the common expression when you say to a person, yeah, I want more like than words, I want... I, no, 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 let's take away manifesting. What, what do people say about words? Like, words mean nothing to me. I want to see action. Or words don't mean as much as action. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. Means, yeah. That, means, that means words are just simply a surface manifestation. It's not, too, it's not that deep. So where, people most, where a lot of people go wrong when it comes to their realm manifesting by prayer is the same as using the secret. It's the same. It's just it's been split up through semantics and cultural realms, meaning these two different spaces use different words. They mean the same thing, okay? But in one space, prayer is simply to be to a person because some people may take prayer deeper and see pictures while they say, mm -hmm. I'm praying, pictures and yeah, feel it. I don't. When some right. person just says the words, and what do you say about words in life? I need more than mm -hmm. words. I need to see you mean something to you. I want to see it play out in action and feeling and emotion. And that's where a lot of people who use the word prayer are not drawing the connection to how to use the prayer. It's prayer and the secret and manifesting. That's all one, one bubble. It's just one is giving you the steps and the blueprint from a metaphysical perspective and over here, mm -hmm. people have it from a religious perspective and haven't drawn the bridge yet to realizing that they're the same exact thing, just like the athlete zone and the meditative person's trance. They're the mm -hmm. same thing. And I only, real, I only tied the trance and the zone together because I was an athlete. I get in the zone, was a high-performing athlete, and then left that realm, right? began to read and study on books, stumbled upon something like this, this word called trance, read more into the word trance, realized that I got into trances playing football. We just called it the zone. Mm -hmm. They'll say, That's true. the athlete hears nothing, but there, you know all those people are screaming, but you hear nothing. The ball sometimes the slow down. Yeah. It's not. It's, this is real stuff here. I'm telling you from experience. This no, the same I, as I the definitely trend. understand. It's the same thing yeah. I do so, with my music. So, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Ex yeah. I same it. in music, and that's where me and you have a common ground. Like I channel my music by getting into a trance. So, right. so I get you right there. Right. So, so, mm -hmm. so when it comes to prayer, you know, I want you know somebody, you know somewhere is like saying I'm about to pray and they're like just saying words. But the way the, the science, the mechanics, like if we wanted to take apart a car and see how it works, the mechanics of the car, the, 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 the way the engine turns, is it combustion or is it electric, right? How it's functioning, mm -hmm. what makes it move, what makes prayer, the mechanics of what they were trying to explain with prayer is nothing but what you're getting with reading the book Secret or Think and Grow Rich or anything that's telling you to fill it. Yeah. They're just giving you mm -hmm. deeper mechanics. You're getting deeper mechanics of how it works, where most people who have the word prayer in their vocabulary, they're missing out on that because they are compartmentalizing their research. Like, they're only a lot of people, like, I read, I, 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 my Bible has nothing but tabs from front to back, Right. Right. I have mm -hmm. a Quran, right? I got that book too. Um, and then I have the books of the spiritual, metaphysical nature. And what I, I read them both, and then what I did is I drew a bridge for myself. I, I merged the things together. You understand? Right. Where most people are sitting on one side of the coin instead of seeing both sides of the coin and figuring out, wait a minute, this is actually the same thing. This is one coin. This is one coin here. People are just using... Their, 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 their language in the best way they can to explain something. So mm -hmm. prayer is prayer here, but it's the same as visualizing and feeling and manifesting, but the person that has a metaphysical perspective and has read The Secret of Think and Grow Rich, they're going to be more efficient with bringing things they want because they have the mechanics. Like if I, say, if I just say build a car, 
and I talk to you about it and just draw a picture, you're not going to know how to build a car. But if I take apart an engine in front of you and have a book that shows you every piece of an engine and how it works, you can build a car yourself. That's what metaphysical that- books are doing in terms of telling you how to manifest and use prayer. See, prayer, prayer is the same. They're the same thing. It's just some people who only have the word prayer will get stuck with just saying words. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They'll get I mean, stuck with that, just saying I, words. What, what, I, what I'm saying as far as, like, the law of attraction or, or visualization with me, and I'm pretty sure people like me as well who are kind of skeptical of certain things or because they can't see it all the time, it, it's not – as realistic for them, so it's hard for them to, I guess you're going to say, open up your subconscious and to manifest well, then, things. Then, then, even then, if, then stop praying. I'll say that. I don't mean it. But then stop praying because prayer is the same thing. And you can't see it. Why are you praying? It's kind of like, I'm going to be honest, it's kind of like a hope. You know, I feel like it's like, it's more of a hope. Like, I really hope this can come true type of thing. I mean, I, I don't I, prayer. I'm not gonna say always 100 percent works because a lot of people. I'm sure I know I pray about my loved ones and I've lost my loved ones in the midst of also them being, you know, you know, damn near losing their lives and I'm also praying for them to recover to come back and they have lost their lives. You know, so that's a result of experience. That, that can be that can be part of the result of not having the mechanics of prayer. Like I said, like a lot of times people But what do you mean by that? You're saying just, not believing it hundred percent? No no no, just not having the not yet tying together that energy travels. So if someone is you know, when someone's about to transition, they're they're losing their energy force, their life force. So that means right. When people want to, when you want to pray for a person to give them more energy, you have to actually know that you're trying to send them energy, not words, energy. So, so right. you want to, you want to visualize energy leaving you, because what you visualize happens. That's why you can picture yourself with this girl and feel something. So you're getting the the evidence to where what you're you're also at the same time doubting every day you're using it we're all using it all the time but more times than none against ourselves we're 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 manifesting more reasons not to feel good and i i addressed this on the last show in detail like how to Mm -hmm. keep yourself motivated while trying to manifest you should play that one back Mm -hmm. because yeah but 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 ultimately when you're trying to send someone energy you need to know that you're trying to send them energy first of all and and that, that, that way you're actually sending them energy and not just words. You want to see energy coming into them, feel what it feels like. See, you know, you can feel something before it happens, especially for a loved one. If you want to see them feeling good, you got to feel what it feels like to know. Like if you know what it feels like to see them doing bad, you can feel and see them in their mind smiling, in your mind see them smiling, you will feel something. And this is why I have a problem with virtual reality today because what virtual reality is doing is it's causing people to stray away and it's by default from their imagination or even even knowing how to use their imagination because it's like right. why go into my mind and try to see pictures when I can play a video game or put on VR glasses because th- th- that's the that's the problem. See, you can you can see in your, in your you can see in your mind someone smiling, someone loving you, mm-hmm. hugging you and then you will feel something, and that feeling actually is an energy. And energy doesn't die, it just changes shape, and it travels, and it moves. So that means it travels, and then that's why the mechanics, understanding the mechanics on how the law of attraction works is very important, because if you don't understand the mechanics, you will always be a skeptic. But it's, it's the mechanics work, and it's based off of just, understanding spiritual principles, or, or actually understanding the laws of the universe. The laws of the universe validate, science validates the law of attraction. Right. Science does. But when I, so okay. there's no, but so when if I'm, you believe in science, if you believe in science, if you believe in that plane being able to fly you from, that's science, fly you from the East Coast 
to the West Coast or from the East Coast to London, science is I, also I believe it to a certain extent. To a certain extent. You believe in the plane? Be also flawed. I believe that, yes, but I believe the plane is, flaw, uh, uh, is not flawless. A, a plane has crashed so many, just, you know, so many plane crashes in the news, you know. I, I don't believe, I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? I don't believe things a whole 100%. And need experience in certain things, even when feeling, as you say, even when feeling it, you know, really feeling it. And, vi- and like, like you said, the whole visualization thing. What I'm saying is, a mother could visualize her her daughter or or son getting through it. You know, a, a one who's very, you know, well, well into faith, big on faith, and that's right there is believing. You know what I mean? Believing in something you can't see, and still. They lose their daughter or they or their son, and we all say, "Oh, well, God works in." Well, I'm not saying everybody, but you know, the cliche is God works in mysterious ways, or God this and God that, and it's trying to bring some type of understanding, you know. And that's okay, what I'm but, saying. But what happens? What happens? What happens to a person has a lot to do with that person too. So whatever that person is focusing on could outweigh the energy that mother, that brother, that father is sending that way, sending that person. So it's not a validation of these things not working. Uh, ultimately, mm-hmm. this is an individual journey, so an individual is going to go through what the individual is going to go through. You can only assist. It's like, it's like, right. it's like okay. I can only assist you and then, you know, help you change where your frequency is leading you with my, my visualization, prayer, the one and the same. But ultimately what I'm going to tell you, because I, I see what's going on, like with belief, that's something that many people struggle with. But, again, yeah. the laws of the realm, the laws of the realm uh, have dominion over us, okay? So meaning they're above us, as above, so below, not as below, so above. So that means the human brain can be tied up in all kinds of back and forth. That doesn't mean the universe is any of that. The universe has dominion over us. So, so ultimately, the universe is mental, meaning whatever it is, and if it's as above, so below, that means that that goes for you too. So that means the individual's experience is based off of their mental capacity, their mental interactions, their mental visualizations, their mental feelings, their mental ideas, their mental thoughts. So whatever mm-hmm. is in your mind is true to you and your world. So, so, so doubt, uh, belief causes things to not work. That's all part right. of you. So that's going to be all a part of your reality because the universe is mental. So you're experiencing life based off of your mind from your vantage point, from what you're manifesting for yourself. You're manifesting non-clarity. So that's what you're going to get through, you know, thinking, you see, see, this is a problem with intellect. We think we're smart by dealing with, you know, intellect and theory all the time, but we're forgetting that the universe is mental. So if we put all that intellect and theory, and this is why ancient languages were simpler than the English language, by a language mm-hmm. like Hebrew, Arabic, Amotic. These things are these are simple languages that didn't have so many it's a maze. See, language English is a maze and the brain is a maze. So so what happens is if your language has all these these different kind of derivatives of one another, you create and tie yourself up in your own mind with intellect and perspective. You keep, you get caught up in a maze. And this is why okay. English, That's you true. Know, when you speak a different language, it was like, go, I, I'm hungry, need food. It wasn't, I, my, my appetite is flourishing, and I think I need to quench it with a bite to eat. You know, you see how complicated that shit is? Somebody somewhere else is like, <laughs> what are you talking about? I need food? Oh, you want to eat? Okay, I got you. But see, since we have overcomplicated things with trying to be, you know, so smart, we tie mm-hmm. ourselves up and forget that the universe is mental. So everything that's in your mind, what I'm telling you right now by saying all that, is true mm-hmm. in your world for you and for you alone. Yeah, it's for right. you alone. And it will continue to be your reality as long as it's in your mind. It doesn't mean that it's not working for 
Megan or Bonnie or me or anybody else. Mm-hmm. Because the universe is individually mental for individual human beings, meaning the, the individual is experiencing what they hold in their mind. The universe is mental. It creates through mentalism. So do you, as above, so below. So your reality is true to you, and it will always be true to you, and the only way it will change is when you change how you view the world and how you understand how it works. No one see, I can't even tell you I can't even tell you you're wrong to think the way you think because the universe is mental. You it's true to you. It's true to you. You see? No I'm gonna create a no. whole nother truth. With I my disagree mind. with that. And, it is something that I have come to grasp with is that that is something that is not right. You know, having those internal struggles is because it's not serving me, as you said. It's a disservice to yeah. me. It has hindered yeah, me for so long in certain departments of my life. So, therefore, that I know that it's a struggle. Like I said, it's like two people within you where you, like one had the spiritual side or the ego. I say like before, the yeah. ego versus it's, the soul. It's the war it's like in heaven. One side. It's the what? It's the, it's the war in heaven. I, I understand what you're going through. It's the war in heaven. Or to give you a visual perspective of it, it's those old commercials with the, the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other yes, shoulder. And I don't mean voice. it in a negative yes, or positive yes. way. It's the war in heaven. Right. And that's something. That, and, and okay, so from, Aristotle, from Aristotle to Plato, all these European philosophers that wrote uh-huh. and read and studied all the, the great writings left behind in Egypt, Kemet, whatever the fuck you want to call it, that were writing about saying basically what I'm telling you, we're defining this war in heaven that you're going through and understanding that it's it's a pointless war because your reality is based off of what you decide. So let's mm-hmm. go to people in the realm that are famous that people tend to have more faith in, right? I'm just Boyd on Take the Night, you know, doing my thing. Who's going to believe me, right, right? So let's go to Will Smith, mm-hmm. right? You'll see cuts of him all the time telling people what I'm saying to you, just very detailed. Just decide. Right. Decide what you want to be and be it. And be that. What you yeah. want to experience and experience. What you want your life to be, your world to be, and just decide. He's basically telling you what I've said in a more detailed way because some people understand more with detail because it, mm-hmm. I'm giving you the mechanics, the mechanics. See, I like to know how things work so I can put them back together. So I, I tend to like the mechanics of things. So, and I don't need someone to be like popular to believe them. If it makes sense. And if I've read it and I tie my sources together, I, I just do deductive reasoning. And I, I come to a conclusion, and then I test it myself. So, so when I just told you, yeah, you tell me, you tell us that you have problems with believing in being able to feel and visualize things to manifest for you. That means you've decided yeah. your fate regarding that. You've decided, you might not understand it, but you have decided your fate regarding manifestation with that very thing, that very thought that you just came up with. That's, that's what you're going to experience, the universal mm-hmm. mental meaning. You, you're experiencing the things that you desi- decide are true. So you've decided to have, for whatever reason, and, it's, and that's okay for you as the individual, for whatever reason, you've decided that not believing in being able to manifest or change your own outcome is your reality, and that's why you believe. That's what you believe. So that's what you're going to experience. You've decided. Right. Me, I know that's decided. an issue. That, that's an issue, though, Me. because that is not truly what I want. So that, therefore, it's Okay, an so issue. change your mind. Change your mind. Change your mind. That's why they have that word, that, 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 that notion right there. It's hard, but that's why it's there. Change your mind. See, a lot of times people don't really change their mind. They just change... They just change, like, the, the surface of something, and they just want, like, it's like going to China and eating McDonald's. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. I want change, so I'm going to go to China, but then I'm going to look for the closest McDonald's. That's not really a change right. of mind. That's a change of location with the same exact experiences you had here. You could have yeah. just kept your ass here. 
to eat McDonald's, right. what's the point of going to China and doing that shit? So you have to realize that you really are looking for more of a – it's up to you, of course. You have the right to have your own mind. Mm-hmm. When it comes to things that you experience in life, though, it's a matter of changing your mind and choosing to believe in what you want to believe in because the universe is mental. And, and see, that's the thing. It seems like people don't understand what that means, the universe is mental. And I do. And I try to ex- say it over and over again. I was about again. to say, elaborate then. Are you just saying it's based, it manifests okay. based on what okay. your mentality okay. is okay. or what so, you think? Yeah, okay. So you live in the – this planet is in the universe, right? So yeah. if the universe the, – they've defined, and this has been left behind in all kinds of teaching, that the universe is a functioning – entity, basically, that is creating planets, the people on the planet, through mentalism, through thinking and visualizing, just like you do. But see, people Mm -hmm. don't understand that because they don't understand the universe is mental. So when you understand the universe is mental, then you understand how the planet came to be, how you came to be. But what you need to tie that to you is as above, so below. And to elaborate on that, it means everything is nothing but a smaller version than a bigger version of itself. You are a divided version of your parents. Your kids will be a divided version of your parents and you and their, their other, the other half you had, and it just keeps going. Mm-hmm. Everything is dividing itself. This is why math is very key and ties into spiritual concepts. The realm is a realm of division, multiplication, and adding. Okay, that these are very fundamental things that exist on every level. So you're so you're dividing yourself, having kids, multiplying your family, having kids, and adding mm-hmm. to your family, having kids. Right? Most of you're multiplying mm-hmm. things and you're adding things and all that and all those things root with you. So so, so everything is just a bigger, a smaller version of a bigger version of itself. You, Megan, are a little small. Like you're, I'm not going. I'm not trying to call you small, but you're a, a smaller <laughs> version of the universe, and you yes, function the true. very same way it does. So if it functions and it's created all of us and these planets through visualizing and mentalizing things, you create down here the same way, as above, so below. This hmm. is why the human to those that understand these things, have looked at as a supreme kind of entity on the planet, even though they would say the dolphin has the the better brain. But, you know, the human, you're closer. That's why in the Bible this is told you were made in the image of God, the creator. Okay? Now, in masonry, they'll call that God, the creator, the architect. Okay? In Mm -hmm. other realms, they'll call that God, that creator, the architect, simply the creator or the universe. Doesn't matter. That's semantics. What you need to understand is they're all the same thing. What you need to know is what is it and how does it work? How does it work? It's mental. It creates through what it has had, what it has in its mind. And don't try to see it. Seeing it is unimportant. Knowing that it's a mental thing is what's important because once you understand that, you understand that you create the same exact way. So you've made up your mind that by with your thoughts, like I tried to manifest something for a week and it didn't happen, mm-hmm. so I don't believe. So therefore it doesn't work for you. But see, me, like, let's just remove you from it so you can see the way the differences of how people think, right? It's very key mm-hmm. to, like I'll ask people, even with my lady Sarah, like it's, it's amazing when I, the moments where I, peek into her mind and see how she Mm -hmm. sees things from her vantage point and thinks from her vantage point because I wish I could see things through other people's eyes, like jump in her head. It would be cool because then I can make adjustments. I can take from them what I find valuable and add it to me. That's why we're humans and Mm -hmm. we're looked at as superior beings to the rest of the the things on the planet because we can do that. We can can add and multiply and divide things that we don't like from our consciousness. If we are conscious that we can do that, right? Mm. Some mm-hmm. just sit in a perpetual cycle of doing the same things. Like, and that's why they call some people zombies. But anyways, so, so I Wait, is Angelica there? Believe, 
I just want to know. <laughs> I'm sure she's yeah, sure. here. Okay. Yeah. It's all right. I just want yeah, to know. Yeah. Go ahead, boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, my mind, I don't doubt my ability to just, to just make it short because we still have to get to the online question. I don't doubt my ability to manifest for myself. Therefore, I continue to manifest for myself. Now, what I, if it, hmm. now the, the thing that happens for people is if you, you, person I'm talking to, values, mm-hmm. you know, money or cars or fame, and you look at me and what I manifest for me, you think that I'm not, it's not working for me because you're right. basing it off of what you value. That's true. But in my world, in my mind, I always get exactly what I want. And if I don't have well, it yeah. yet, it's only a matter of time. You understand? But what, and well, I believe seven, yes. it it's from the perspective you make of, it be. Huh? Go ahead. No, I said, I said success is what you success is what you make yeah, it to no, be. No. Like what you measure yeah, as no. success or being. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I get it, but I mean it from a different perspective. Like I'm gonna get. Like let's just put it this way. I don't know what you want. This is how I would say it, just generally. And I don't. I'm not saying it, but I'm gonna just tell you how I think. Right. Mm-hmm. I may not have the things that you covet, but I'm gonna get it by the way I feel inside about how I manifest in my realms. Now, whether it's at the rate in which you feel is appropriate for you is the only problem most people have when they're judging other people outside themselves. Me, I understand okay. timing and synchronicity and the laws of timing and the laws of synchronicity. And I'm not meaning like, I'm not talking to you specifically when I say that. I'm talking about a way to think, like knowing that, okay, I'm going to get it, and it's not like, yeah, I'm going to get success is in the eye of the beholder. No, I'm going to get success that you want and they want and anybody else wants. I'm going to do it my way, though, my timing. Mm-hmm. Nobody can rush mm-hmm. you on your timing. Growth happens at its own rate for everybody, right? So when, right. when what, El, 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 um, Edris Elba, the actor, he, didn't, he wasn't a teen star actor like, like, uh, like 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 uh the dude in in um let's say uh home alone he got there when he got there like a a, a wise man in life he's a man and he's mm-hmm. in he's manifested his dreams along with maturity and perspective and intellect right therefore he'll be able to sustain it longer and do greater do great things with what he amassed for himself because it he has wisdom with his success. When a child mm-hmm. star, people doing things for him, and I'm not saying it's a problem becoming being a child star. I'm just, just noting the differences and the differences of timing and when one get when one gets what people tend to desire. One desires people desire things and get them at different rates. Is my point. I'm not glorifying any one thing that one person may want out of life. What I'm saying is, is people get it at different rates through how focused they are and how much they keep it in mind and keep faith. You see, faith, people use that word and they throw it around empty. You can't say you have faith, but yet you're the most unoptimistic person on planet. Faith and optimism is practically the same exact thing. Mm. Faith and persistence in oneself and one's, what they're doing are the same thing. So you can automatically tell when someone is using the word faith and they're mm-hmm. using it like a word, just like a word, like love. Like people throw the w- word love around. It's like, yeah, 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 you love me, right? But yeah, you know, you don't know nothing about me. So you can't be right, loved. Right, 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 right. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it can't be faith if you saying, I got faith, but yet, you know, as soon as you get, as soon as, as soon as, uh, you know, you guys feel like uh, you're not getting the, the, the response you want in two weeks, this isn't working. Mm-hmm. You know, then all hell breaks right. loose and everyone turns on each other and starts doubting the person that's taking, that has the faith, and then that's when things crumble. That's not faith. That's called, as long as the world is showing me that what I like, then I have what I'm calling faith. But as soon as I get an obstacle, who I truly am and what I truly have inside of me is going to manifest, and that's Yo. doubt mm-hmm. and pessimism. You see what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. it's about changing right. your mind. That's all you got to do is change your mind. That's ultimately what I'm saying. And um, I want to 
I'm not trying to get you off the phone or nothing like that. I just we pushing three hours. Yeah, I haven't cool. touched on this top this this online question. I appreciate you listening and 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 having the courage to speak openly on a forum about what you go through. There, that growth and strength in its own self. Do not take that for granted. Well, I'm looking for understanding from different perspectives as well. Yeah, don't. That's great. Don't, Rather than don't being take that just in my granted. head. Yeah, like mm-hmm. create an invisible badge about that and put that on your shoulder as I'm growing. Because in this world, being able to put yourself out there is key to your success, whether it be networking and and just meeting people. So, you know, mm. this this isn't a, something to just take for granted. It's a good thing that you're having this discussion with us on here. You you know you're 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 talking and you're putting yourself out there and that's a great step and that's how I just wanted to make make sure you understood that if nothing else you know what I mean right all right yeah, so. well good talking to you um Boyd and 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 how you say Angelica is that how you say your name yeah yeah Angelica and find her on yeah, Facebook um, and hit her up from time to time too you know hit Angelica's a great energy to you know, have in your frequent in your vortex. You know, even if you just hover around pieces. her, checking her out, huh? I said I want her pieces for her jewelry. Yeah, hit her up, <laughs> hit her up, hit her up. Yeah, and you'll see her. You'll see her belief in her persistence, in mm-hmm. her dreams, and what she's manifesting for herself. And then you'll see that me and her talk, and you'll see oh. my persistence, and you'll see why we can vibe. If, trust me, she wouldn't, we wouldn't talk for hours off the air and on the air if I was on the phone doubting myself with her every three seconds. She'd be like, oh, hell no. Nah. He's fucking up my vibe. <laughs> right, see, right, that's right. why she's laughing. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm not just mm-hmm. talking to you like this on air. Like, we speak off the, you know, off air all the time. And we, we like, we throw ideas off of each other and just talk. You see what I'm saying? So some mm-hmm. people, you know, need certain genders to associate with. That's why I'm saying, you know, if uh, if me, the male figure, if my presence isn't what works for you because certain features and out exterior things work for certain people and certain, you know, tones and vibrations work for certain people. If it's not me, hit Angelica up because we're 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 damn near images of each other in in that regard and how we're thinking about how we attack this realm. That's why we cool. Mm. <laughs> okay. And I got a question. Am I um gonna stay on the phone while listening? Yeah, you can stay on. stay on. The f- okay. Yeah, don't just don't hang up. Yeah, just don't hang up, and we appreciate you. Yeah, no Thank problem, man. You. Appreciate you. Thank you for helping. All right. No All problem. Right. <laughs> All right, so Angelica. Yes. What's up? Uh, can you be- hear before me? Before we go, just yeah, I can hear you. Before we close out, Oregon Ducks rule question. He says he's been thinking a lot about chakras and such. And do you think that if someone is naturally strong in a chakra, that they could have developed that chakra real well in a past life? or lives and off the jump I'm gonna just say yes and that can kind of tie into birth charts and stuff like that like look into your what I'm gonna say to you Oregon Ducks rule find somebody who does birth charts we had somebody on our show that did them you can contact her if you like or you can just find somebody somewhere who does birth charts because our birth charts are basically they're not using the term chakras but just like I was explaining to the last person we compartmentalize the realm and through semantics and through cultural differences, we create these different terms and expressions for the same shit. And what you can find in one chakras in terms of what, what they all represent, if you look at your birth chart, you can tie what strengths you are showing up in your birth chart and what you relate to from that birth chart to what's active in your chakras. If you're able to be honest with your, what, what's going on, and that's all I'm gonna say on that, and I'm passing to Angelica. <laughs> well, um, 
I can see why somebody would stay, like, if they have a certain chakra developed or overly developed. That means, you know, they maybe, if this is something that they carried with them from a past life, um, you know, it's not only that, but, you know, we, like we were saying earlier, we bring, or we come into these, these contracts, these agreements, you know, and things that we set out for ourselves, um, you know, to achieve over time and in our own soul's evolution. So, um it is possible, it is highly, highly possible that, you know, somebody who has a, a certain chakra developed, you know, has developed that over time. Um, but then you also have to think that, you know, we come here with our own certain gifts and abilities, you know, and that's always been with us. Um, but diving into yourself and figuring out what your own abilities are and what your gifts are, you know, does open up um, certain chakras and certain things within ourselves that that need to be healed and need to be figured out. So, you know, it's really up to the individual to understand um, what these energies and these symbols mean to them on their own journey and what their experiences are showing them for their own, you know, evolution of their self. Um, so, you know, it could be something, you know, chakra related. It could be something past life related, you know, but it's really up to the person or the individual to, to really figure out. Um, and that really determ is determined by, you know, where they're led to research, you know, what they're drawn to. So. Exactly. And the reason why I brought up birth charts, just to build on that, because I know someone isn't seeing the tie, is because the way I, from my perspective, the way I look at my birth chart, knowing that I've dwelled on this planet more than once and that we're, I, I've come here and I've had strengths and worked at certain things at different times, the way I see my birth chart in this current life is a result in a, a, in, a, in a compilation of all those past life developments of certain aspects of myself in the present, in this form. So I'm saying, and I know that, you know, one's, one's reaction is based off of what's active in the chakra system. So I can, in my brain, I can tie my birth chart to past life to what's active in my chakras as a result of past lives, but we can also have things turned off in our chakras in this current life by, you know, our traumas and shit like that. But if something's naturally going and someone didn't seem to work at it and they had a natural skill, a natural ability, I tend to think of that as like, yeah, I've been here before and I worked at that. That's why I say check out your birth chart and maybe my perspective can help you gain, like, a holistic clarity, or it might confuse you more. But it's up to you, like I said, to figure out how you do things. Remember, the universe is mental, and that, that's, it means that. So it's what, what you come to the consumption of is what it is for you. We can come to common, you know, grounds in certain places, but we're not down here to all agree with each other. We're all down here to exist in a realm of divided but united, subtraction, division, multiplication, plus addition. And we tend to try to lump ourselves up in groups like we all have to think the same way and agree upon the same thing, but we're here to, to be like the universe and be like everything, in one space together, being able to work together, not necessarily agreeing and trying to copy each other at every moment, being ourselves. So... I hope that gave clarity on my perspective. And give out your info, Angelica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, so people can hit you up. You can, so, so you can find me on social media. That is Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Serenity CMD. My website is www.serenitycmd.com. And my email is angel at serenitycmd.com. All right. And you can find the show. I'll take the night. I'll take the night. I'll take the night.
I'll take the night. I'll take the night. I'll take the night. I'll take the night. I'll take the night. Cause you have a heart that's divine. Deserving you all, girl, you're mine. Eternity's ours, yeah, you're mine. We'll live the lives. I'll take the night.